I see you. Die hard. Trap. We gonna do this one the right way. Uh. We in here forever. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Die hard. Homie, die hard. You can check the swag. He the realest by far. Swimming in that blue and orange. He the lifeguard. Yeah, he been through pain. At least he got some nice scars. He can smell the trophy. Yeah, he need it back to back. Represent himself. His own name is on his back. Ten toes down. Try to stop him, he come back Bandwagon hoppers, he will knock you off your tracks You ain't saying nothing, Nero been here from the start He been working in the lab to take his team and make it art See him going over film to help him build and make him smart He will tell you how he feels because he's real and he got heart He will never fade away, he will never change his face Everybody picking faves, and he's feeling out of place Cause he is for the team, and he always worth the spark Like that Christmas movie, he gon' always die City on my back They ask me what's my name and it's on my back I'm just speaking facts We got big dreams, we ain't looking back We be really die hard, yeah, that's a fact We be really die hard, ain't no going back Make the whole crowd rise like a thermostat Fourth quarter, I'm the killer that's gonna murder that Bang, we in the place to be, man. Knicks, Sacramento coming in hot. Game is about to start right now. Just almost missed the tip off, but we're right there at the tip of it right now. So we got Mr. Hartenstein with the tip. Bang. Knicks get the ball. Hart, Hart with the ball now and gets over to Brunson. Killing a lot of time on the club before the eight across the timeline, man. But we are we, we doing another late night Knicks, man, man. What are we doing? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You know, but um, we love the Knicks so much, man. So we up late at night. So if I'm up. Oh, the OG right off the bat, full um, head of steam, you know, missed them. They played the three-point line a little bit too tight. He saw the baseline and was down there to get that nice little dunk. Uh, but, yeah, man, I mean, these Knicks have been playing good, man. OG comes in, comes back, and he's like freaking, um, you know, T'Challa, Black Black uh, Panther, man, comes in there, and we blow out um, the team on the road, uh, the Portland team. It's like OG comes in there much more inspired, you know, just inspires the whole team the way that he plays. You know, the, the way that he came from Toronto, he came right away and played it, it you know, extremely well. Um, you know, as soon as he stepped on the, on the court. So the Knicks create a turnover. Nick of Sacramento coming down the court. Good defense by DiVincenzo. We're getting underneath uh, Sabonis there. Brunson, this little dribble there, comes off the knee. It'll be a turnover. So he stares the referee down there. It looks like he might have, he thought it was off of Sacramento. It's a little bit sloppy in the beginning to start this game, man. But you can see that the energy is up this, um, this squad. Um, you know, this um crowd, I should say. Wow, look at um <laughs> and here we go. It's a late night game, man. So I'm exhausted, but so much stuff is happening so far. Hartenstein just blocked the dunk there by um uh, from the twin Sacramento. So I gotta get my I don't even have my, my stuff up yet, guys. So let me let me just show you what's going on because I mean the energy of this game so far is pretty good. OG with a corner three, highly contested. They could Sabonis bringing the ball up up the court. So yeah, man, I don't have anything set up yet. You know, I'm you know. All my shares and tabs that I usually have up. I have nothing up right now. So let me show you what I got up. I got this up right now. <laughs> so that's it. Josh Hart drove inside. Gets bumped. No shot. But that's good. So, I mean, you, you can see Sacramento's up for it, man. The crowd. You can see the energy in the crowd. The way the crowd was acting before the game started. So, yeah, man. So, big time block there. Hartenstein. So, you know, we're talking about defense, and fans are still talking about – I keep talking about this, man. Fans keep talking about Mitchell Robinson, how, oh, we need to get Mitchell Robinson back for the defense, this, and the other. But that's not what this team is lacking. <laughs> this team is not lacking in, in um in center play. You know, even Jericho Sims is playing well. You know, so we're not – that's not our weakness for, for the Knicks. Oh, we need to get Mitchell Robinson back. It drives me fucking crazy, man. You know, we're not we're not lacking, you know, in defense where we need to get our, our uh, you know, defender – you know, uh, Mitch Robinson back, or you know, or the or the world is gonna end. No, man, I, I feel like the Knicks are, are 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 in good hands with Hartenstein, and people are saying that yo, know, they can't wait to, for Mitch to come back to replace Hartenstein. Hartenstein's playing his ass off, man. You know, so I mean, it's, it's a couple things. You know, like that, that's what what that's what makes me keep on going with this podcast. Is people say a lot of dumb shit, man. People say a lot of fucking dumb shit, man. So I, I feel like you know, and they say they say dumb shit. What makes it even worse is they they say it intelligently. You know. 
Like, how could you? How could you have such stupid and like some some like um you know thoughtless takes and like you know like like you don't even watch games or anything like that. Like you're not even a fan of the team. How could you have such thoughtless takes about the Knicks and do it so eloquently? You know, so that's why I get I do the podcast a certain way. You know, that's why I do it with whatever because you know um there's there's no there's no reason to to um come here. Uh, so it's talking like this. Hey guys, welcome to the Dire Next podcast. I really enjoy your 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 company. You know, uh, let's watch the game together, guys. You know, I don't. I would never act that way. And people act that way. I met a lot of people in person, and like you know, a lot of people starting to meet people in person, you get to see how they are in real life and stuff. You know, a lot of people, their energy is not the same as the, as it is online. You know what I'm saying? Like they they talk like this, but then they really talking like this. Yo, what's up, man? My, you know, whatever. You know, so it's it's kind of bugged out, man. It's, this world, this world is bugged out. You know, I, you know. I haven't done a done a pod in a while, you know, so been been very busy and stuff. But you know, people are freaky deaky, man. There's a lot of freaks out there in this world. So anyway, um, Knicks are missing uh, missing some shots here early on here. Got a, a corner three point shot. Who went to wide open? Got all day, misses it, man. So here goes Josh Hart with the rebound, pushing the ball up the court. So I think both teams are just so anxious to get it get it popping, you know, as um, Divincenzo shoots that three in and out there. So just watch out, man. Just um, prepare. If the Knicks um don't are not um don't are not clicking in the first quarter, then it usually means that we're probably gonna end up losing the game. But we'll see what happens, man. You got Brunson with a rebound. A lot of missed shots on both sides of the ball, man. So both, like I said, both teams are very anxious to get this game going. Man. Hartenstein kicks it out to Divincenzo. Here comes OG on inside for a nice little floater for Hartenstein. Can Mitchell Robertson give you a floater in the corner there? Baseline floater? No, I don't think he can. You know, Mitchell Robinson would have tried to dunk that. He might have missed it, and then he would have had to shoot free throws, and he's shooting 30% from the free throw line. Shit is bugged out. But, yeah, man, I'm waiting for this first timeout. The timeout's got to come soon here. Sacramento um is up by, you no, know, it's down. Down um six to five. Knicks are up. DiVincenzo comes across the timeline, being guarded by the anti-DiVincenzo there, Mr. Huerta. Runs the top of the key now. You know, they're in the mix there. Sacramento's playing decent defense. They're trying to get it popping here. Brunson just tried to take the, the flop. He didn't get it. He shoots the foul line, extended jump jump shot. So here goes Fox coming down the, down the line there. They're switching the ball around. Sabonis behind the back pass there to number 13. Twin misses a floater. Nope, he gets it in. She got the shooter's roll. Eight to seven. Seven, three, seven right now in the first quarter. Brunson dribbling. Hartenstein standing right there, but Brunson swung around, was able to draw that foul. So, yeah, man, we got a little break now. So, I think Brunson, is he going to get free throws or is just a shot on? I think he just, um, they're not in a penalty or anything like that, man. So, we're going to wait for an inbounds pass. So, I see the guys in the chat, man. So, thank you for, for people for, for popping up in the chat. You know, I appreciate it. Brunson is out of bounds now, looking to, to, to take the ball in bounds. The referee wants the, the ball in a specific spot. So, here we go. Looking to get it inside. Devin Chenzo gets it back to Brunson. Brunson takes the bump there. Um, easy foul. So Sacramento trying to create fouls, or I don't know what what why did they, they're giving take fouls like that. So we're here to just bumps Brunson for apparently no reason. I just don't understand. Yeah, I'm just watching, man. You, you got the coach um Brown is, is going crazy. And there's somebody in the in the um on the baseline, a fan or somebody like that. I don't know who that is. He's shaking his head. Like, what are you shaking your head for? I don't see anything that, that that's going on that, that that's shaking your head worthy. OG between the legs there, crossover. Drives really hard, takes the bump, takes the bump. No good there. Hartenstein fighting for his life for that rebound. OG ends up with it, but they're going to say it's out of bounds there. But listen to the young lady, number 91. Got to be careful not to touch the refs, bro. Uh, he tried to argue his case there, but um, to no avail. Yeah, man. Peace to everybody in the, on the earth. Got the Knicks playing on the West Coast. Like, fuck the East Coast, man. Sheesh, man. These games are rough to watch, man. The last game, I missed the last game because, um, you know, I just I just couldn't do it. You know, it was a very busy day um, for me the other day, man. I just, I just could not get to the computer to, um, to get the game popping off. But I'm here today, man. I almost put the glasses on my eyes a little, little bit red. You know, you can't really see it because um, StreamYard does a really good job with the filter there to, to keep you looking smooth. Definitely appreciate it. So 8 to 7, 7, 0, 5 here. So we got some, our first free throws here. We got um, Harrison Barnes. Everybody's been wanting Harrison Barnes in the Knicks for the longest, man. Thank God he's not, man, because, you know, you know the guy that we need is OG. You know, uh, we, we had um, Brunson. I'm not Brunson. Barrett. We had RJ, RJ, RJ Barrett. 
you know, um, while I'm thinking about it, um, rest in peace to RJ Barrett's um, younger brother. I still don't hear see any reports of what happened to the kid. But at this at this point, whatever happened, you know, I mean, the dude passed away, man. So much condolences to RJ Barrett and um his family there, you know. So that, that's crazy there. So Brunson comes in there, gets um double block there, no foul called. Transition three point shot number thirteen. Twin bangs it off the backboard. OG ends up with the rebound. Cross court pass to Divincenzo there. Divincenzo with a transition three. So the Knicks are on one today, um eleven to nine. That touchdown pass that OG threw was with it was with the bad arm. So, you know, OG's cooking, man. You know, people were complaining. I saw on the internet complaining about um his elbow. They was holding his elbow in the last game. The dude had surgery, man. First game's back and stuff like that. I'll tell you this right now, man. I, you know, I gained a lot of weight recently, you know, in the last um year or so. I gained a lot of weight, man. So I'm like, I'm like 251 right now. I was as as high as um well, I, I want to say I was high as, as like 260 something at one point, man. But I got it down to 258. I've been stuck at 258 for a while, so now I'm 250, 51. So I'm trying to lose weight, man. But I'm, I feel it in my ankles, my knees, and my hips and stuff like that, man. So, you know, somebody um, five foot ten, should, I'm just gonna be five foot eleven, should not be 250 something, 260. You know, it's not, it's not something that should be happening. But you know, life happens like that. You know, so you know the the weight's gonna be going down. You know, the the sun is back out now. Got daylight savings and all this. You know, um, New York City is popping off again, so everybody's going to be outside. You know, so it's, it's my motivation to get my life back together, man. So uh, uh, definitely we'll be, we'll be losing that weight. Speaking of that, I got some big cheat holes in the, in the, in the clutch there. 50% less fat. I'm not, I'm not eating these for that reason. My wife buys this stuff in bulk, and it just happened to have um, big Cheetos in there. You know what I'm saying? So um, my wife likes the baked, um, you know, stuff. I'm trying to give the kids a different, different snack every once in a while, so... You know, she got a lot, a lot of big. So I'm gonna try these big cheese. I never had them before. You know, I don't have my cup. I forgot my cup because I was arguing with my wife before the podcast started. But I got my um Pepsi in the Puerto Rican bottle. You know, so for anybody ever been been to um Puerto Rico or been to the Caribbean, um this is the bottle that the that the sodas come in, like in the little this little sexy bottle here. So um that that's that's the point of, of and it's it's a 1.5.25 liter. You know what I'm saying? So this this is the bottles they have um down in the Caribbean. So that tells you right now that the United States is becoming like a third world country, man, if, if we're starting to get their products. So, you know, let me let me look at the ex expiration date on this thing. Yeah, 2024, June. So it's good still. Yeah, man. So it is it is what it is, man. Yeah, but uh, rough, rough game to watch here, these these late night games. You know, the last one, I'm glad the Knicks won, man. But, uh, you know, because, I mean, that's one thing, too, man. You stay up late like this, you know, to watch these games. You hope better. Hope the Knicks freaking win. You know, shit is rough. So anyway, we got commercial. First commercial, man. Uh, Rob Bracy in the place to be. First, uh, first person here in the comments. Uh, you know, like I said, always compliment on his Avi there. Beautiful, um, Avi. Got Dwayne Dennis in the place to be. The high chat. Eru, Geraldine in the place to be. Um, shouting out, saying what's up. So Dwayne Dennis already with a paragraph, buddy, man. <laughs> That's my guy, Dwayne Dennis. What's good, man? He says, um, this is an important game tonight. Both Pacers and the 76 won tonight. Cavaliers lost. Uh, we want to sprint to the finish line. Uh, fourth to eighth seed is too close to comfort. Uh, we could use a, a little. Yeah, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really too, too focused on, on, uh, on the seeding at the moment. You know, because um, my, my thing is like, like any, any team that, that we face, like, like um, the 76ers, I think is probably the easiest team because Embiid is not there. Uh, but it's gonna be a fight no matter what team we play. Um, but um, you know, what are we afraid of? Are we, are we do we want to play Cleveland first? Are we afraid to play them? Do we, do we want to get our seeding up to play them in the first round? And yeah, that's gonna be a tough, tough matchup. You know, so like I said, I mentioned 76 and you got the Bucks, you know, um, you got uh Fox inside there. He just knocks um Brunson down. They didn't call it corner three um for number 13, Mr. Twin. Hartenstein ends up with the rebound. Brunson full head of steam coming down the court there. Fake the pass to Josh Hart to DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo almost gave it back to Hart, but you know, Steele was there, so he held on to it. Josh Hart ends up with the ball anyway. Comes around a Hartenstein screen, cross court pass to OG. OG gets it in the corner. Nice strong play there, posting up. Uh, Huerta really has no chance there. It comes up and under there, but team defense slapped that ball out of there. So here comes Fox walking up the ball, kind of kind of slow. Tried to jam a pass inside. Nick stole that. It was Josh Hart on left hand side, looking over to Brunson. Brunson in the elbow, kind of top of the key, kind of thing. Now he's all alone with with Twin on the island. Drives past him. He tried to do a under underhanded pass. Bad decision there by Brunson. Here comes um Sabonis there. Took two steps. Huerta's asking for the ball in the corner. At least I think that's Huerta, number nine. 
Got 13, kicks it out to 40 in the corner. That's Harrison Barnes. Has a boss fade away. In and out, no good. Hartenstein fighting there. Josh Hart fighting. Sabonis ends up with it with a nice little layup there. So, I mean, I know Julius Randle is rolling around all over there on the bench there because he because he loves playing against Sabonis. You know, I don't know what it is, man. One day we'll get that story, you know. So it goes Brunson kicks it out to Josh Hart. Josh Hart over the DV Chenzo just lets it fly, baby. Off the front of the rim, no good. Sabonis with the rebound, pushing. So this is what they do. It, you know, people complain about Julius doing this, but look, Sabonis comes down the, um, down the court, gets the rebound, coast to coast, and gets the layup. Looks like the Knicks might end up calling a timeout here. See, Bruns, um, Tom Thibodeau is yelling. No timeout being called here. So Brunson comes around the screen. He's being guarded by three people, basically, inside the DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo's open, comes inside. Right-hand shot is good. Florida he gets the foul, baby. So count that bucket, 13 to 13, and we're going to get an and one. So, yeah, man. So, like, like the seating, the, the, I'm just trying to trying to explain my thought process, man, because, I mean, like, you know, you mentioned you mentioned all these teams. The Bucks. Uh, you know, Boston is the one that we don't want to play them in the first round, of course, right? But I mean, the rest of the rest of those guys, they're basically all like interchangeable. I'm not afraid of anybody in the East. So, our seating, how does that really, really mess us up, really? You know what I'm trying to say? Because if we play a certain, let's say we play Cleveland in the first round, because we're the fourth or fifth uh, uh, team in there, and we're playing Cleveland in the first round, who do we play in the second round? More than likely, Boston, right? You know, if if we um if we're like um you know, the third seed or whatever the fuck, you know, or, or fall down to the sixth seed and we end up playing like like Philadelphia or, or something like that, or end up playing the Bucks. I like our chances against the Bucks, you know, so if we beat the Bucks, then who do you play next in the next round? You know what I'm saying? It's, all, it's still going to be the same shit. So the seeding, I'm not really too too worried about. I'm worried about the Knicks getting healthy, man. You know, that's, that, that's just my thought process now with the, with, um, with the schedule and stuff. Of course, you want to finish strong. There's no doubt about that. But um, seeding-wise, I'm not really too, too, uh, too afraid about losing a spot Stuff like that, you know, because um, I think the Knicks have good a good chance to, against anybody that we play against. The only team that, like I said, I, I would like to stay away from, at least in the first round, is Boston. That's the only team. You know, every other team I, I wouldn't mind um, playing in the first round. Maybe even the Bucks too. Like you want to save the Bucks for the second round, maybe. You know, Bucks and Boston. I guess both those teams you want to save them for the second round. But any of the other teams, man, I'm with it, man. I'm with the smoke. I say, just watching Brunson. Brunson just scored a nice little tough shot there. He got bumped, no foul, bro. So I mean, the Knicks don't don't get the benefit of fouls, you know. Even though Brunson does get his his nice share of fouls, but Brunson has to get his ass whipped to get get fouls, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, once again, um, so um, shout out to um Geraldine. Uh, we got Daniel Daniel Berry Sports highlights. What's good, man? So I've been I've been looking to um to I was trying to remember um you missed. So I gotta I gotta write guys down so I can check people out, show love and stuff. Daniel Barry. Yeah, man. Just showing love, man. Making sure that I write it down so I can check you out later. Got Brick Nation in the place to be. Yeah, salute to all you guys, man. Making sure I say what's up. Jackals here. You know, I mean, it's not, it's, you know, when you talk shit out, it's not really about being 100%, right? It's just, it's just like we're just having a basketball conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, like you might have your opinion about what you think is is um uh, is the right thing, but yeah, that 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 could be right too. You know, you you talk it out. You know, your your opinion is right too. But you know, I do with the way my thought process. You know, is is just that. You know, I just explain my thought process. It goes um, it's a bonus there. It took forever to shoot that. It had all the time in the world. Knock that down. A little bit too happy out there, these guys, you know, like like the like schoolgirls in, in the playground. You know, Brunson, I mean, Brunson and the Knicks, man, all business, it seems like. You know, Brunson is very serious right now. Precious is back out there. So Brunson knocks down the shot. So Brunson is all business, man. You can see him. He's, he's really, his eyes are really low. He's not playing around tonight. It comes um this crazy motherfucker here from Sacramento, almost turns it over, ends up um going out of bounds, but the ref is saying Sacramento ball. So let me get my screens up here. So I do have the the um the NBA.com scoreboard there, but let me let me get my other scoreboards up here. So I can um so I can see names and stuff and get um start to get um familiar with these names. You know, I am familiar with the names with some, but um just for you know from my perspective, guys, man, there's a lot of shit happening at, at this time. You know, they got commercials, you got um the gameplays playing. So sometimes in my head I can see the person's name. But I, I just can't get it out. I can't get it out, you know, my mouth balls. You know what I'm saying? So um, it was kind of weird sometimes. You know, but um, once, once you see the see the names and um whatever, then it just spits out. Like uh, Keegan, uh, is it Keegan Murray? Or is that his brother? Yeah, that's Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray um, in Sacramento. I couldn't get his name out, so I just was calling them twin, you know, number 13, twin. 
you know, because he has a brother that plays. The, we just finished playing actually in, in Portland. Those guys look exactly the same. We try this big. This is that big Cheeto shit. Let me see how it tastes, man. Mm. Tastes just like regular Cheetos. Maybe um, not as much cheese, maybe. Basically the same. Excuse me for drinking out a whole um, bottle, but I don't have my cup. I forgot my cup. Yo, know, I don't know what's up with women, man. You know, I love my wife to death, man. You know, I'm always talking talking drunk about her. But it's like always before the podcast, man. Like, that's when she wants to, like, to, to talk to me. You know, before that, she acts like she don't even give a fuck about me. You know what I'm saying? But as soon as I'm about to do something, as soon as I'm about to have some fun, hey, let me talk to you about something. Oh, brother. And then I get in trouble, and then here I am on the pod, you know? Ooh, delicioso. Yeah, man. So there's quite a few watch alongs out there, man. So I have some ideas. I have some ideas for this podcast, man. Just trying to trying to. I'm thinking about rebranding, actually, you know. It's still gonna be the Hynix podcast, it's still gonna be Eru doing this thing. Um, but I'm really thinking about rebranding and I'm trying some new things and just um letting it go because I mean we've been doing the podcast for a minute now, you know. Always got the, my, my jersey in the back um for 2018. 2018, I was doing audio podcasts, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, the audio podcast was fun. I was trying to find my voice and stuff, just throwing it out there. Basically doing the same shit I'm doing now, but just on audio. You know, so, you know, if you, if you guys could check out the audio podcast, you can find that on all platforms. I don't I don't post on it anymore. I was trying to figure it out what I was going to do with it, so I just left it alone, to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? So um, the audio podcast, I was doing that. So, you know, check out check that out and listen to it. You know, it was definitely a different vibe. You know what I'm saying? But, um... I like this YouTube stuff, man. So, like I said, I, I'm gonna do a soft reboot kind, kind of to this, um, to this pod, maybe, you know, and to see, see what else I can do here, just to, just to um, make it a little bit different for myself, you know. I know a lot of you guys appreciate, you know, the way that I do things and stuff like that. You guys are here every night with me, hanging out. If you're not here for the entire game, you're always popping in, making sure you show love and stuff. So I definitely appreciate you. Yeah, man. But um, definitely would like to try something um different, just to spice it up a little bit, you know. We'll see what happens. We got Deuce McBride in the game. So Deuce McBride, I've been wanting to hate this kid so bad, you know, just the, the way that he plays. But he plays really well off the ball. Right now, he's dribbling too much. That's the issue, man. Once he gets caught dribbling too much, you know, it's not good for the team. So he's been dribbling, 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 dribbling. Now they just jump on him. Ends up being a jump ball. But the the way Brunson had the ball there, he had it too much, man. You got to get the ball out of Brunson's hand. I mean, a Brunson, um... Uh, do speak Bryce hand. You have to get the ball out of his hand, you know, because he doesn't know how to make those passes. He doesn't know how to run a team. He doesn't know. Yeah, he, like he doesn't really know what's happening when he has the ball in his hand, you know. But once that ball is moving, let Josh Hart, let DiVincenzo get the ball. Let let um Deuce play off the ball. Then now you have a good a good um thing going on. So Josh Hart had to get the ball on the rim there for the shot clock violation. But here we go. See, DiVincenzo now has the ball. Let let DiVincenzo and these guys um move move the ball around. DiVincenzo with a nice hard drive. Now this is this is um where McBride gets it in the corner, pulls up for three, off the front of the rim, no good. So I mean bad possession by the Knicks, man. But once you have Deuce McBride too and too much dribbling, we're just in no man's land with that. Sacramento comes in there and gets a nice little layup there. So they're up by five and they're acting like they won a championship. This shit is crazy. So Josh Hart comes down. So we finally get this timeout. This timeout is a long time coming here. Tom Thibodeau is fooling around here, allow, allowing Sacramento to get a little bit of confidence. So, I mean, as, as soon as the other team started smiling and clapping five and like, hey, oh, my God, how you doing? Oh, my God. Like, as soon as they start doing that, it's like, yo, timeout. You know, but there's been a few times now already. Uh, I'm trying to get these guys' names um, down right. Uh, but Monk, when Monk came in the game like three minutes ago, so three minutes ago we should have called this timeout. When Monk came in there, Monk and, and Sabonis did, did like a little girl thing. Hey, girl. Yeah. <laughs> they did like that just now. So as soon as that happened, as, as a coach, I would have called a timeout. We need to get this this. Because these guys are a little bit too fruity out there for me. So, you know, just, just let, let's take a timeout, get ourselves together, and, um, you know, get this um, defense and get this physicality back back in order because the Sacramento King, Kings team is a little bit too loosey-goosey for me, man, you know? So that, that's my thought process. But Tom Timber always allows the other team to get their confidence, and then he wants to call the timeout. Now we have to play catch-up. You know, and we don't have our we don't have our shooters yet, you know, um, which is Julius Randle. We need to get Julius Randle back. Once we get Julius Randle back, then we have the extra firepower to um to to fall back on if we need to score and stuff, you know. 
Yeah, shout out to um, Bogdan. Bogdanovich is in there. Bogdan, Mr. Bogey. Everybody likes to call him Bogey. Mr. Bogey's out there. So, Bogey, we still need him to score, too, you know. He only played one minute so far, but we need him to score. You know, that's that's the thing. I hope that never stops, you know. So, I, I mean, the Knicks look good with OG as a, as a starting power forward and Josh Hart as, as a small forward. But once Julius comes back, does Julius start right away, just like the way OJ did? I keep saying OJ, right? BD Vincenzo in and out three point shot. Here comes um, this guy. What's his name? Sabonis has it now. Sabonis comes around, gives it over to Monk. Monk has it now, top of the key, too deep. McBride stays with him, but gets caught in the step back. Josh Hart with a tough rebound there, pushing the ball there, very physical. Looking for his teammates, gives it over to DiVincenzo. Hard drive to the basket, kicks it out to Deuce over to Bogey. Bogey got to knock down those threes, man. There's, like, no reason for him to be out there. If he's going to miss wide-open three-point shots, man, then there's no reason for him to be out there. Cross-court pass turnover there by Sacramento. So, I mean, like I said, the, the, like, if, if Bogey's not making a three-point shot, then he's basically um, Fournier out there. You know, say so we don't need Fournier. You know, we need Bogey to be out there. You know, Bogey scores in a physical way too. He takes bumps and, and stuff like that, driving or whatever. They require to play play tough defense on him because he's a physical player. But if that ball's not going in the basket, it's no point. He tried to go base um back door just now. Josh Hart didn't didn't catch him. Precious has it now, top of the key. Singled out there by Sabonis there. Trying to trying to Knicks are trying to run like a weave kind of play here. Josh Hart gets it foul line extended, knocks down that down that jump shot. 19 to 22. Got 29 seconds in this um quarter here. Looks like um, you know, fast forward here. Looks like um the Knicks are gonna end the first quarter. Okay, so let's play it out. Knicks are gonna end this quarter um on a good note here. So Sacramento's holding the ball, they're trying to get the last shot. It's like five second differential on the shot clock and game clock. Bogey comes out to show. So here goes Monk, drives in there. Good defense by Deuce. Knicks, a uh, good team defense by the Knicks. So Bonus uh, just made a moving screen there, but Bogey still was able to, to recover. So Bogey comes uh, full court there, able to get up there for the left-handed dunk. So that's that's how the Knicks finished off strong. So um, 22 to 21 is a good first quarter, man. I think both teams are feeling, uh, feeling um, you know, kind of feeling each other. It's almost like the first um, couple rounds of a boxing match, man. And, you know, usually the boxers feel themselves out, get the um, the range, get the timing down, trying to see what's going on first before they start pouncing. So I think that's what's going to happen in the second quarter. Once um, once we get the feel here, somebody's going to pounce. <laughs> so, I mean, we're playing in one of the toughest arenas, man. The Sacramento Kings um, fan base, you know, are really good. So, I mean, Sacramento, if you was to move a team, that's the team that you want to move. You've been wanting to move Sacramento since the 80s, you know what I'm saying? You know, they um were Sacramento, what was Sacramento? Were they were they Kansas City? They were Kansas City Kings. I don't understand why they moved from Kansas City to Sacramento. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You know, because Kansas City, I believe, needs a basketball team. You know, that that area um kind of needs a ball team. You know, but um, you know, they moved they moved over to um to Sacramento. So I mean, you know, we we've been wanting to move them forever, man. But they always keep coming up with, with, with good teams every once in a while. And their fan base is always packed the arena, just like the Knicks, you know. Um, you know, I wouldn't compare their fans to us, but um, just the way that they come out for the team is very, you know, very similar. You know what I'm saying? They don't travel, but um, just playing in that arena, people come out for them in Sacramento Arena. So you know, definitely got to appreciate that that fan base. You know, so I mean, they're they're, they're you know a story team. You know, Brooks Nation. You saw I'm talking about Davian Mitchell here, not playing games against Deuce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bojan better wake up. Nice little dunk there. Sometimes you need to get up on that rim to get your confidence up. Yeah, hopefully. You know, we're going to need those daggers. This guy on um, both, you know, that's that's why we need kind of need, need to get Julius back. Because once you get Julius back, now you can can really settle into the minutes. You know, so Tom Tibbles is, um, he can't, Tom Tibbles can't complain because he has all the, the weapons that he could possibly um use, you know, to, to win games, you know. So guys should not be playing 40 minutes a game when, um, when we're fully, um you know, when, when we're fully healthy. You know, so it's really going to be a, a struggle for Tom Thibodeau to um to really figure out the sweet spot with the minutes. He can't just simply rely on Julius Randle to to uh, save the Knicks when he hasn't played half the damn season. You know, and we can't burn out Brunson. You know, so we have to utilize the other players that we have on the squad, man. I think the the Knicks' best attribute is team basketball. We play really good 
team basketball, moving the ball, cutting, and stuff like that. So hopefully Julius comes in here and he can settle down and just allow that to allow that to take place. You know, and then, but it, it, it's really Tom Thibodeau need, needs to um, get that notion out there and don't rely on, on Julius to do everything when he comes back because that's, that's like that's gonna do the whole team and the fan base a disservice, man. So I look look at the um, look at the um, Sacramento got Knicks fans out there. There's Knicks fans everywhere, but you just got to do the math, man. How many millions of people live in New York? You know, so how many people lived in New York, made their money, made big money in New York, and just grabbed their bread and moved to a smaller town for some um, for um. A slower pace, whatever, you know. But they're still New Yorkers, you know. So they still follow the Knicks. So that that's that's the situation with with um with um New York, you know. Because people look, oh, the Knicks fans travel this that, and the other, you know. The Knicks fans actually, um, you know, it's you know it's a city that never sleeps, but it's a city it's a city about getting money. A lot of people get money in, in New York, man. All different kind of ways. Um, he goes on um, Burks just throws it up, shot clock violation. Uh, Sacramento gets the ball. But you know, just uh, you know, living in New York, you meet all kind of people, man. People make money all kind of ways, man. You know, and um, you know, they go off and they do other things. It goes precious, precious kicks it out to Josh Hart. Josh Hart comes in there up and over. Oh, he blows it, but Sacramento blocks it, so it's end up, end up going to be Nick's ball. Josh Hart is funny. He was like trying to argue it, but he was just joking there. Pretty cool. See, precious there. As soon as the ball gets um gets uh, slapped out. You know he's already looking up the court to get to get the ball up the court fast. You know, so those little things like that, Tom Thibodeau definitely implemented that. You, you know, we definitely have the the clientele to get it done. You know, but like I said, we can't get lost in the sauce when when um, Julius comes back, man. Josh with his free throws. Sorry about the crunching, man. Like I said, this is not live. This is not live TV where I got a producer or anything like that, and we go to commercial where. When they go to commercial, I'm quite sure Breen, Breen is stuffing Oreos down his throat, you know, during the commercial and stuff. You know, you got two minutes to shove, shove some cookies down your throat, you know, or you got two minutes to guzzle down a beer or, or a bottle of water if, if you need it, or to blow your nose or something like that. You got plenty of time to do that during the commercials. Yeah, but here we go. Sacramento, you got a monk cross court pass there. So that was monk there that shot it. So a lot of these guys look the same there. You want to talk about Monk? Monk is um, zero. Number five is uh, Fox. They look very similar. Knicks really good defense, man. They say the Knicks play physical. That wasn't a physical play. Knicks were just playing good, clean defense. Bogan, Bogey, I don't know what he thought. He was 23 years old, but he's down there driving, you know, trying to create a shot there. He barely has any athleticism to create the separation. If the center wasn't there to block the shot, he probably would have made the shot. He probably would have scored there. But, um, you know. Wishful thinking there by by both by um Bogey. Precious with the great defense, man. He does a really good job of staying down without without fouling and um, have active hands to get up on that ball. It goes Deuce, top of the key there. Precious sets a nice screen. He's open, gets it back, kicks it out to Burke. Burke for three. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. <laughs> Burke's for three is gonna cause a Sacramento timeout, baby. So I mean, good ball for both teams, man. You gotta you gotta give it up to Sacramento. You know, historically, they you know when they when they play well, this is the way they play. They they play with teams like this. You know, shout out to um Chris, you know Chris Weber, of course, and and that squad that they had. You know, a lot of moving and grooving with the ball. These guys kind of do the same thing. They, this this team is not as good as that Sacramento team was, um, but just you, know, you can just see like the the little elements. Same thing with the Knicks. You know, we're talking about physical defense right now. Um, that's the Knicks' reputation. So um, we you know historically we have a reputation of having a really good defense. You know, even from the championship years. In the seventies and um, various teams through the eighties, nineties, um, you know, and, and uh, the two thousand team, you know, the the one fifty games, that type of thing, you know. So th that's our mo there. But shout out to Trish is in the building. What's up, Trish? So Trish, um, Trish been saying she's been trying to catch me, man. You know, um, I've been, I've been setting up these pods like like five minutes before or ten minutes, fifteen minutes, thirty minutes, sometimes before I'm gonna do the pod. You know, so I apologize for that, man. But that's how I do it, man. It's late, definitely a late night thing going on. Got Kareem uh, Grant in the place. Uh, there's quite a few people doing it, man. You know, I think Knicks Fan TV, I saw a, an alert from them. Uh, you know, uh, Legion of Knicks does one. You know, uh, Freezy's doing one now, too. You know, so there's quite a few people doing watch-alongs. Uh, let's see if, Bur let's see if Burke's um, seeing it through the hoops challenges. Um, seeing it go through the hoop changes things. You know, but, I mean, it's going to be short-lived because, I mean, once Julius comes back, I, I don't know uh, how the Knicks are going to do this. But Alec Burke seems to be the one to be the odd man out. 
Because right now off the bench, you got Precious Bogey, um, McBride, and Burks. So as soon as you start, as soon as you bring Julius into the mix, you have to bench either Josh Hart or o, or OG. You know what I'm saying? That's actually a hard decision. You know, OG is really is really good, man. So you can't bench um OG, but but Hart has been playing his best basketball of his career right now. You know, so it's gonna be hard to see him come off the bench. But it's gonna have to be Julius and OG starting, you know, with Hartenstein, Brunson, and um and DiVincenzo. Um, they're gonna have to find a little bit of chemistry because there's two new two new starters there. So that's something that that um ha- can't go without saying that there's gonna be two new starters, and they're gonna have to find that chemistry in the starting unit. And then um once once you push Josh Hart to the bench, now the bench is Precious Bogey, um, McBride, Burks, and Hart. So that means that Burks is out because I don't think that um Tom Thibodeau is gonna play 10 guys. And then you add Mitch Robinson to, to the mix there. So that's the problem. So I was arguing with somebody at work about that. But sometimes I, once you start playing talking about basketball and the guys start getting a little bit loud, I just I just fall back because um, you know, I'm I'm at work number one and I'm not getting into no fights over the Knicks at work. It happened a couple times and it wasn't it wasn't really pretty. You know what I'm saying? So I just try not to do that at work. You know, so I save my Knicks takes for um for for my channel, yeah. But um, yeah, man. If um once we get once um Josh Hart goes to the bench and then we got um Mitchell Robinson, now you're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six. You're talking about um six players off the bench. So Tom Tim is not playing eleven guys, man. You know, if he plays eleven guys, you know, is it's gonna have to be like, you know, the team will have to be so locked in that they don't even care that that eleven guys are being played. You know, that um Mitchell Robinson is gonna have to sacrifice that. That he's not gonna play 20, 30 minutes a game, you know. He might be able to split with Hartenstein, but then where does um Precious play? Precious is gonna have to play. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, man. Very interesting. Josh Hart has to play. So here goes Murray there for a three-point shot. He missed. Burks with the rebound. This guy Murray's been pure dog shit, man. I I um banked on him in fantasy that he was gonna have a a major upgrade in the season. He's been you know basically basic. You know, been pretty basic this year. Precious now top of the key. Fakes a pass to Josh Hart. He's wide open, so they're calling something off the ball there. They're calling something on bogey. Maybe a legal defense or or maybe a loose ball foul there on a loose ball. I don't know. These referees want to be famous, man, I tell you. I definitely appreciate everybody showing love to each other. And Tristan's over talking about um, threes, but that's okay. Okay, you're talking about the threes. I got you. You know what I mean? Just be talking, baby. Just be talking. Good little in and out there by Fox. That Fox kicks it out to number 25. Who is number 25? He knocks, it's going to be 23, knocks down that shot. I'm not a fan of dudes with um with color in their dreads. It's, it drives me crazy. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's the young boy style. It goes Burks. Burks got a little pep in his step here. Gives it over to... Precious, Precious to Deuce McBride, comes around the screen and holds it, gives it over to Bogey. Bogey doesn't shoot it. He sidesteps and kicks it out to Burks. He has to let it go. Knocks down that corner three while he's falling out of walk, while he's fading out of bounds. It's like bugged out that he makes shots like that. Here comes Monk. Monk over to number 23. Ball swings around. Fox has it. Josh Hart was in his face. He still shoots it off the front of the rim. No good. Deuce with the rebound. He's coming up the court. Here he comes. Bad decision to, to hawk it over to... um. To Burks, but it ends up going out of bounds due to Fox's um attempt steal attempt. But that was very crazy there with um with with um Deuce. <clears throat> so they call it. I mean, I'm looking at the they just showed the replay there with Bogey. That was bullshit, man. Bogey gets it, tries to jam a pass in there to presses. Their press is very patient, able to get the, the loose ball. But um, this guy here has been um been blocking some shots. So this this is a dude that I thought that they wasted his career, man, in Sacramento. You know, he just had two blocks there. You got Alex Len. I feel like Alex Len absolutely, um, they wasted his career in Sacramento. They definitely could have got a little bit more for, from from this dude when he was when he's when he's over there. Look at his attributes: seven feet tall, two hundred fifty pounds. As you can see, he runs the court really well. As you can see, he can um block shots a little bit. He has some offensive um you know skill. Um, how old is he now? Now he's thirty. His career is basically over there. So I think Sacramento. You know, they really could have um developed a really good player, but they they really did not. And they, they were um benching him like crazy, you know, DMPs for no reason, man, you know. Especially when they were losing, you know, the, you know, Alice Lynch should have been developed. And then they really didn't give a fuck about him. They really wanted Sabonis, a guy like Sabonis to be the center for the modern style basketball. 
you know, but I, I think Alex Alex Lane could have definitely been utilized a lot better in his career. Josh Hart kicks it out to Burks. Burks corner three there, but they're going to call a loose ball foul there. So who's 23? Who is this motherfucker? You know, got a lot of energy. I'm not saying he's a bad player, but got a lot of energy. So is that Davian? That's not Davian Mitchell. So that's um Ellis. That's somebody Ellis, right? Yep, that's um uh, Keon Ellis. Keon Ellis from Alabama. So this is him right here. Uh, six for three, 175. He's light on his ass, boy. 175. I was 175 maybe like uh, 15 years ago. You know, when I was in my John Travolta days, dancing at, at, at the clubs like a, like a... Anyway, got Keon coming down. Gives it over to Fox. Fox drives. Pulls up. Off the glass, no good. Uh, number 13, just standing there. Nobody was guarding him. He comes in there, dunks it in there. So I hate those little little stupid plays where we we, we forget about a player and he comes in untouched. So Josh Hart comes in, uh, comes down, tries to call a timeout. This guy, um, Monk, in there with his shenanigans. So Tom Thibodeau looks like every bone in his body is killing him, man. I definitely can relate. So Nick's um, calling timeout here. We got to get ourselves together. 33 to 29. Uh, both teams are still trying to get their, get their shit off. Uh, but the Knicks are still behind the eight ball here. Uh, we're down eight to 11 in the second quarter. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Mm -mm -mm. So let me do an around the horn real quick. I'm doing some reconnaissance on my end here. You know what's odd to me? Like some, some, um, some channels, they like to do um, just score bot type of things. You know, they'll do like a score bot thing where they just have to score on there. It's kind of weird. So I'm just taking a look at some some other channels here. There's some interesting um ideas, you know, for, for watch alongs. I'm looking at this channel here, man. He does um Knicks content. I mean, there's so many different Knicks channels out there. So I mean, this guy looks like he might have just started his um Thing there, no, but he does um he does primarily watch alone just like just like I do, yeah. But um definitely does does it different, you know. So I appreciate it. I appreciate the, the different looks, you know. Just looking around the um the league, looking around the the, the bench, see what everybody else is doing. But yeah, man. Knicks are, Knicks are a big club, man. Like I said, there's so many different podcasts out there right now. There's this um, Twitter spaces and stuff like that. Everybody's out there doing their thing and stuff, man. So it's, it's good to see. Everybody has their own little thing, um, little little way of doing things. Looking around at Marvel, too. Marvel is definitely trying to trying to get this shit off, too, as far as their, um, their movies and their, all their projects. You know what I'm saying? Um, they're very ambitious. They had a story um, to put together. You know, especially after that um that uh, uh Infinity Song um, saga, that was really good. They did a really good job with that. But they're trying to catch that same thing, and I think um due, due to the writer strike, writer strike, COVID, writer writer strike, kind of messed everything up. You know what I'm saying? So you know they definitely still have a, a story that they want to tell. I don't think it's the story that they wanted to tell initially. You know, so it's it's kind of uh, kind of bugged out. The Jonathan Majors thing kind of messed them up too. So, I mean, Marvel's, you know, you could compare them to the Knicks. A lot of injuries and stuff like that, but they're still trying to get it together, still trying to um, win, you know? But, I mean, it, it is what it is. And a lot of good look, got, got a lot of good looking Knicks fans out there, man. I see my man here on the right-hand side right behind the referee with the uh, behind-the-back um, Knicks hat with the Knicks um, jacket looking real smooth. You know, definitely appreciate Knicks fans around the, around the um, bend there. I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of cool shit going on out here, man. Shout out to Knicks fan Brazil. They do a watch along also. He's been doing a watch along. You know, so it's pretty cool. So we're still in the timeout, man. This is um this is something I, I wanted to show off here. Um front stoop. Let me make sure I turn this down off. The uh, front stoop is also a Simeon Russell channel, man. So this is the front stoop here. So I know you recognize um uh Ron there. Ron is talking. I'm I'm there next to him, and he got a, a artist, his name is um Big Stet. He was our he was our artist on the we were interviewing um last night man so this is um something that we've been doing on, on the on the front stoop as far as like hip hop man so if anybody's interested in that check out the front stoop you know also Sydney and Russell channel right so um it's what we've been doing there so um you know interviewing artists and stuff 
um de definitely making making some good friends and stuff like that um I'm finding some good music and kind of like trying trying to um trying to um you know open up another door for for artists you know to get exposure man so you know so hopefully um you guys support that you know because it's a really really cool thing we would like that channel to, to um to blow up a little bit more you know um it's a little, little bit ratty the way things are going on you know um, ron is trying his best to keep it to keep it on um, flowing and stuff you know what i'm saying but it's not easy it's not easy when you have things to do man you know so i, I keep saying that so you know i keep playing that lotto too man you know what i'm saying keep playing lotto keep investing in shit Hopefully, um, you know, somebody could drop some bread on me or something like that where, where we can put out a more, you know, more content, you know. But, you know, all of us got a lot of shit going on, man. It's crazy. So anyway, so the game's back on. So bonus gives it over to uh, number 16 there. So that's Davian Mitchell. Next with the rebound, Brunson has it now. He got the elbow. Takes a uh, pass from Precious. Precious. Wow, Brunson just pulls up, knocks that down. I thought he was going to give it up to Precious. But it's just a three highly contested there with Dav Davian Mitchell right in his face. Here goes on um, Sabonis. Sabonis does a lot as far as passing and stuff like that. Number nine has it, so he just launches that. That was Huerta. Huerta all net, but but misses it. Misses the rim. So funny story. They were talking about um, Huerta. You know, he Huerta had his own story too, man, because um he had some problems there with his contract coming to Sacramento as well. But um there was a story where DiVincenzo was was um was on that team and he was expecting to um to get a starting spot and stuff like that, but they kind of did him dirty, you know. But then they ended up get, um, getting Huerta, Huerta and, and um DiVincenzo the same player. I, I would want uh, Dante more than Huerta, you know. So they they uh, I guess they went for the taller player. They have a vision of how they want the shooting guards. And um, you know, they, they went for the taller, taller player, but even Chen was definitely better than Huerta. But anyway, as I'm talking there, Brunson just hit a dagger um jump shot there to give the Knicks the lead, 36 to 33 there. So Brunson there, super strong in his legs, man. Nice little um in between shot there, highly contested. One thing, um, you know, when you go to these games, when you watch the Knicks live, you can't really see it so by but um, by being so far up in the in the crowd. Um, you know, but you know, shout out to people that are on the floor, they can see the players up up close and whatever. You know, um, but one thing um, we, we we ended up going to to the shoot around before the game started, so you really get to see how big the damn players are, how strong they are, how in shape they are. Brunson looks like a bull. He looks like a um, a bull um, on TV, but in person, he looks like a like a he just looks like a soldier. Slim, very slim, very um very muscular. You can see his um his like his his um uh, his stature. You know what I'm saying? You can see how strong he is. He just walks strong. You know what I'm saying? He walks like his feet are stuck to the ground. Super strong player, man. You know, a lot of guys. I was I was impressed by Maxi. Maxi has a very strong body too. You know, very strong core. You can see that. You know, so when, when you when you get to see games live or get opportunities to go to shoot arounds and that type of thing, you really can see, you know, how um just how this is how amazing these guys are. These are like world class athletes, man. So to see these guys in person, OG was impressive. You know, Deuce is impressive um in person. You know what I'm saying? These guys, they just look crazy, and 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 they, they look like um, like fake. You know, there's one thing to be in shape, there's one thing to be a professional athlete. Um, in shape, two different things, man. It's incredible. So Huerta comes in there. You got OG playing him really, really tight. So Huerta's basically locked up Huerta there. Sabonis comes in there. Precious is doing his thing. Precious is playing. Wow, man. This guy Sabonis comes in there. He put the ball up, man. All he did was say bye bye to it, and um, and it went in. Unbelievable um, shot there by Sabonis. It goes Brunson posting up a little bit. It gives it over to Bogey. They come all the way out to Bogey. Precious takes the top of the key, spins, tries to find Brunson. Brunson has it now. Keeps it really tight. So confident, man. Double team there. Sacramento did a really good job of doing that. But they're holding the ball there, so they're going to call what? Out of bounds? They call out of bounds on the Knicks. Looks like it's going to be Sacramento ball. Oh, no. They're going to say out of bounds Sacramento. So they could have called it either way. Look at this play. They're showing the replay here by Sabonis. Sabonis pushed off a little bit. But watch the shot, though. He just put the ball up high with the left hand and just flicked his wrist and it went in. Really good basketball player, man. OG did a good job of sealing off there. He had to get the shot up quick because of the shot clock um, violation. He didn't realize it, but uh, ends up getting the shot up in Sacramento rebound. Bogey's trying to play some good defense there on Huerta. Huerta crossed him over there. Bogey's still fighting, though. Spin on Bogey. Precious comes in there on the help defense there. 
Brunson has it. So, I mean, Bogey, you know, he plays hard defense, man, but he doesn't have any breaks. Brunson with the crossover pressures inside, trying to float it up to get it over that rim, knocks that thing down, baby. So that's the problem with Bogey. Bogey doesn't have good breaks. He keeps um, he just keeps moving. Once he's moving, he's moving. He, he can't stop. Figures the balls again. Nice little post up. Precious is doing his best job there. Slaps the ball out of his hands. Out of bounds on the Knicks. So Precious knew he was coming out. So Precious is going to the bench. I don't know what they call a foul here. Good defense by Precious to slap the ball out of bounds. Did they call a foul? I'm not sure if they called a foul there. I think it's just out of bounds, but pressure is definitely coming out. I don't know who's coming in. Hart and signs back in. So Hart and signs in there to give some size to um Sabonis. You know, so I think the Knicks are playing really good defense on on um, Sabonis for the most part. But Sabonis got 15 points here, baby. 14 points, uh, six rebounds, two assists, one steal. That's what he does. You can't um you can't contain these all stars, man. Nice pass inside, man. Big time pass, uh, to number five on the cut. It's crazy. So here comes Burks there. Burks has, like, the worst sneakers in the NBA, man. When he was with the Knicks before, he was, like, wearing, like, it's like he was like he was wearing, like, skippies from Walmart. It's crazy. Now we got some other wild sneakers, man. Brunson with a nice hard drive. No foul. And he's getting rocked. He gets rocks left and right, man. Uh, peace to Cully in the place. What's up, Cully? They got Space Ghost and Holcomb in the place, too. Damn, man. Yeah, man, shout out to Cully, man. International superstar, Mr. Cully here, yeah, man. You know, incredible with the music, incredible with um, with everything. Just everything that the motherfucker does. Yeah, man, be encouraged, man. People, people, um, you know, really, really think highly of you, Cully, man. So whatever you got going on, man, you know, just keep doing it to the fullest, man. People, people um, love what you're doing. We got some free throws here. DiVincenzo and Murray's coming back in. So um, this guy Fox is shooting free throws. Fox has been pretty quiet. He's still got nine points, though. He might He's about to get 10 after this free throw. Uh, man, we're about to get to halftime in a second, man. It's still up 42 to 38. Uh, so I'm a little bit behind right now. I'm, I'm about um, 20 seconds behind. So we're going to get some NBA action here. Second, I mean, Fox actually missed the free throw. So here comes Brunson. Looks like the Knicks are going to score again. Brunson comes down the court being guarded heavily by Fox. Takes the bumps, you know. DiVincenzo has a nice little stutter step inside for the floater. He knocks that down. And DiVincenzo has been so good, man. You talk about a guy that's solid 15 points per game and more, you know, th this this year. Sacramento comes in there. This guy Sabonis comes in there with a bullshit shot, and he's going to get the foul. So, I mean, the Knicks have been getting hit harder than what Sacramento's been getting hit. But they're getting their free throws, and the Knicks just night, night in and night out have just don't get free throws, man. It drives me crazy. So Sabonis comes in a sidestep, man. He barely got fouled, man, and they called the foul. It's unbelievable. But this guy Brunson literally gets, gets rocked every single time he drives to the basket. Uh, so I guess I'll talk about that at halftime, man. But right now, free throw the, um, the difference in free throws here, you got four for five for the Knicks, and uh, for Sacramento, the seven for eight, man. So it's not that bad, but still, you know. So Brunson is coming up the court now really slow, man. 19, 17, yeah, 17 seconds he comes across the timeline. Brunson with a hard crossover, being guarded by three players, man. Four players are looking at Brunson right now, dribbling by himself. He loses the ball. Now he has to give it up. Gives it to Hartenstein. Hartenstein got it in the right spot. DiVincenzo wide open for three. Whoa, in and out. That guy DiVincenzo lets it go, baby. He goes Fox comes down the court. Fox is known for his speed. Um, I mean, I don't really like the way he's running the team. So, I mean, he just they let him off the hook there. He shot the three. He missed it. DiVincenzo, top of the key kind of. Gives it over to Brunson. He's literally top of the key. Jab step on Fox and just pulls up right in his grill. Knocks it down. Big time shot by Brunson there. Just put the brakes on and just launched it, man. Unbelievable. Here comes uh, my man Monk here. My man Monk has, is super athletic. He just pulls up and knocks that down. So he basically does the same thing. Just comes down, just launches a three-point shot. You know, no, no play call, no, no action. He just comes down and just throws up a shot and goes in. Yo, so Monk is good, man. But, you know, Monk got in trouble for cocaine, of all things, you know. You know, so, you know, he's one of those guys, man. He's super athletic and stuff like that. So it makes you wonder if, if he was doing coke and stuff like that. So, I mean, sometimes when you do drugs like that, that drug stays in you. You know, so maybe that's the reason why he's always all super hyper and, and, and whatever. 
You know, so you hate to throw that out about people, but that's what happened to him. And he got in trouble for cocaine. He got suspended by the league for that. You know. Uh, but this team, man, you got guys like Huerta on the team. You got this guy Keegan Murray, uh, Harrison Barnes. You know, um, these guys are, are like not really the greatest players there. But this team is, is still good. And this team is um thirty eight and twenty seven, right there with the Knicks. Sabonis bringing the ball up the court, man. Triple handoff there to Keegan Murray ends up with it. Sabonis, nice little pass to Keegan Murray. Lead pass for the for the layup, no good. Knicks with the rebound. Brunson has it. So Monk, I got I keep thinking of when I think of Monk, I keep thinking of Day. I don't know why I keep thinking Day. Maybe he looks like um he looks like a player that you know that that I had a last name Day back in the day. Brunson with a three point shot, he misses it. Fox has a nice jab step drives. He loses the ball. OG ends up with it, but they're gonna call a foul. So it's a little shit like that, man. So I mean, Fox, nothing but there was really no contact there. So it wasn't enough to call a foul. So enough to give um Fox free throws, you know, that's garbage, you know. That contact there was not enough to give him free throws. It's, I mean, that's this is crazy, man. Yeah, man. So we got um he said uh give me a break with the with the yeah, man. I'm trying to tell you. This guy's um Fox here, he just got tapped, and then that, now he's at the free throw line. Same thing with Sabonis. He got tapped too, and then he ended up with free throws. You know, so um, the free throw, I, I was saying it wasn't that bad. But um, since I said that, Knicks are still four and five and Sacramento is nine and ten. So basically double the free throws for Sacramento right now. You know, <laughs> it goes um, Hartenstein inbounds to Brunson. Uh, one minute and 49 seconds here. I'm at the 135 mark, guys. So I'm about 30, 30 seconds behind. A little bit. I'll I'll reset it at halftime. But DiVincenzo top of the key, waiting for something to develop here. Comes across the screen, and DiVincenzo just launches it and knocks it down. So, I mean, uh, Grant just said Dante been bricking, and he just launched that one, knocked that down, man. So, um, at the 115 mark now, we got Monk with the double crossovers and whatever. No, no, no action is happening. It's just Monk going one-on-one. -on -one. Monk gets all the way to the basket. No shot there, but they're going to call a foul. Yet another foul there. So that's the luxury that the Knicks don't have for, for guys to go one-on-one. -on -one. Even when Brunson goes one-on-one, -on -one, Brunson's going one-on-one -on -one within the team concept. But this guy, Monk, just comes down, stands in one place, and just starts dribbling left and right, going left and right, left and right, left and right, until until something happens, you know? You know, mind, mindlessly going left and right, left and right, left and right is different than what, the, what Brunson is doing, you know? So we got Monk with a free throw. He knocks the first one down. Peace to all my Muslims out there, man. Like I said, we still got Ramadan going going crazy. Um, seven o'clock um today. Today wasn't one so bad. I actually went through a first work day today. Well, I didn't really like was not I didn't have like hardcore hunger pains. I also stuffed my stomach this morning, you know, not with a lot, but I had two two little breakfast sandwiches and I, I had like a like a fruit juice. I also had a little little um collagen protein and um had some water, you know. So I tried, tried to get put some good stuff in my stomach there just to hold me down. And like, like I said, I had a decent work day, did a lot of walking around and stuff like that, and, and didn't really have crazy hunger pains. I'm really just be thirsty, to tell you the truth. You know, so just making mental notes and stuff like that, what my body needs, what my, my body wants during the day. So I'm just going to try to implement that, you know, once I get off this fast. As far as the evening, you know, um, you know, I, I, uh, I made myself something to eat earlier. And I basically stuffed myself also, you know. So right now I don't really crave food. I'm kind of munching on on these Cheetos as Brunson hits another three. I'm kind of munching on, the, on these Cheetos just because, you know. And I got the diet soda. I love diet soda, you know. So you know, I have I've, I made sure to get enough water in me. You know, when I got home, I, I always guzzle down a, a bottle of water, you know, to end the fast. That's that's how I end it. I always get a, a nice bottle of water, guzzle down the the the, um, the 16 ounces. And then I, I go to my meal and I, then I start eating and stuff like that, man. So right now I really don't want to eat, you know. So um, we'll see how it works. Like I said, I'm down, I'm down um seven pounds, man. So just got to keep that trend going. Now. So bone is nice and smooth inside there. Hartenstein with a big time block there. DiVincenzo ends up with it, so it's gonna be to no avail there. Time time runs out. But a good defensive play by Hartenstein. I think Hartenstein's the anchor of our defense, man. I don't, I don't, there's like no way in hell that Mitch Robinson will start over Hartenstein. 
you like like I said, I I could say Hartenstein is still a good player. I mean, um, you know, um, Mitchell Robinson is still a worthy player, worthy of minutes and stuff, but not to the point where all of a sudden he comes back and he should get forty minutes, and all of a sudden Hartenstein should get only five or eight. You know, that's that's ridiculous, man. Uh, but let's let's get into this halftime report, man. Let me get um Kareem up out of here. What's up, Kareem? Oh, let's get this over here. We got fifty three to forty eight, man. So Knicks are handling their business. Like I was saying in the first quarter, like um, like if the Knicks if the Knicks are not um at least playing well or keeping it close in the first quarter, that that means it spells it spells um bad news for the Knicks, man. So the Knicks did have a good first quarter. Let's get into that right now. Down with the game with the um summary here. Uh, first quarter, twenty two to to twenty one. You know the Knicks started off pretty good. Like I said, it was like a boxing match. You know guys are just touching each other, trying to see the the angles and stuff like that. Whatever. So the the second quarter was more of a, of a shooting match there. So so um guys are letting out the bombs or whatever. So Sacramento they tried to get this shit off. Uh, Sabonis did his thing. You know uh Fox has been trying to get off too and it hasn't really um really been able to get off too much, but still doing their thing. You know those guys are trying to figure it out. Um, but I just thought the Knicks were a little bit more aggressive, especially defensively and stuff like that, pushing the ball and basically every aspect of the game. The Knicks have been um just um. Uh, pouncing a little bit, a little bit uh, stronger than Sacramento, but it's been a, it's been a dog fight. Sacramento's taking the lead, and, and we've taken the lead. Um, but so far, since the Knicks uh, got the upper hand with five point, the five point lead at the halftime, I just think that um, the Knicks uh, have been pouncing a little bit more stronger than um, than what Sacramento's doing. Sacramento's been kind of like, I want to say, a lot of stuff is like finesse, either finesse or luck. You know, the Knicks, on the other hand, is still lunch pail. Everything is all physicality. Everything is all moving the ball, traditional basketball, good bas- good ball um, play out there, you know, as far as the Knicks, man. So um, that's my opinion there about, about what's, what we're watching. Um, third quarter and fourth quarter is coming, man. So like I, like I always say, all the Knicks got to do is win a quarter. We can we can afford to lose a quarter, you know what I'm saying, but not by too much. Um, but I believe in what the Knicks do in the fourth quarter, man, the way we play defense and stuff. We should be able to lock teams down in that fourth quarter. Uh, so um, let's let's see how this game plays out. Let's get into the game charts. Game charts always start off with the shot chart. So the game shot chart, you get to see how what what, it, what a, um, shots are coming from. The Knicks are shooting all over the court, man. A lot of threes. You see a lot of threes, a lot of X's. Um, look at the rim. There's not any shots on the rim, which is interesting. No shots on the rim. Everything is shot on the outside of the restricted area. That is very odd. I don't think I've seen that the entire season where the Knicks – have absolutely no shots on the rim, no dunks, no nothing in the first half. You know, usually the Knicks get a, quite a few dunks, a lot of layups and stuff like that right on the rim. But as you can see, all the shots are like right outside of the restricted area. That's interesting, you know, because Sacramento doesn't have a um, a shot blocker. So I guess the Knicks have been attacking um, in such a way where, um, where we didn't need to get up on the rim. You know, so that, that's interesting to me, man. A lot of shots in the paint, though, I'll tell you that. But there's nothing on the rim. Uh, Sacramento as well, uh, only one shot on the rim there. Uh, most of the stuff are basically around the restricted area also. Sacramento's been missing a lot. A lot of X's all over around the perimeter. So most of their, their scoring has been has been done in the paint there. So they're shooting um, 39%, only 16 shots uh, made today. Um, Knicks have um, 21 shots made. Uh, altogether, the Knicks are shooting four, uh, has shoot four, uh, 42 shots. They shot 41. Uh, Knicks are shooting 50% to 39%. So those free throws is what's keeping Sacramento in the game. So if, if the if the free throws were were a little bit more closer, the Knicks on lead will be a lot bigger, man. So that's interesting there. This just shows right here that this is a good game. You know, a biggest lead five for both teams, longest run tied seven, and lead changes 14. 14 lead changes, man, is pretty crazy yeah, for for the Knicks and Sacramento. So it's just a good game. Rebounding wise, surprised me, man. Both teams with twenty four. So I think the Knicks could definitely capitalize on that, man. We're a better rebounding team than them. So if we can get back on the boards, then then we win. We 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 if we could if we could dominate them on the boards, we win. You know, so uh, hopefully the second half we we do more of that. You know, um, protecting the ball by by um by rebounding, and we should be able to get this game done. The steals, Knicks have four. They have two um, blocks. We have four. They have three. Uh, turnover game is pretty good. Six and six for both teams. Uh, three point shot. The Knicks are just shooting their threes. Um, they, they're making their shots too in the field goal percentage. Um, so you know, I guess Sacramento on the outside looking in, for them, they they would they they would need to just make shots. You know, shoot the ball better, and then then they could be more in, into the game because they're definitely going to get free throw sh- um calls. They compared to the Knicks, you know. So if they can if they can get there um get hot at least you know or or get back closer to their normal field goal percentage, then they might have a chance to win. 
But um, I, I just don't think the way the way the Knicks play, I just don't think that um, the Sacramento is going to do that tonight. So I'm hoping the Knicks win today. I'm um, looking at points in the paint, tied 22 to 22. Uh, second chance points, uh, Knicks are down uh, five to six, and then fast break points, the Knicks are dominating them 10 to two, which is crazy. So it comes down to rebounding, man. The second chance points and the points in the paint. If we can get on that rim and get those rebounds and stuff like that, um, then we win the game. So I, I, that, that's how I think the Knicks are going to win. Knicks are going to win by by rebounding their basketball and playing defense. That's, that's what's going to win this game here. So let's check out the box score. Sliding out to the box score. We got the Knicks first, man. So um, Josh Hart been kind of quiet, you know, six points, um, or four rebounds, uh, two assists. You know, but if he finishes with 12, eight, and and, uh, and four, that's fantastic. You know, so he has been playing a good game, but not the, not the, the those, um you know, mind-blowing games he's been having. But um, definitely a good game for, for Josh Hart today. Um, OG been kind of quiet scoring the ball, but still three rebounds, two assists. If he finishes the game with six rebounds, four assists, you know, uh, two steals and two blocks, man, then that's fantastic. You know, so he's been playing okay, but we need more scoring from OG. He can't be one for six, man. We we lose games um when, when he does that, man. So we definitely gotta get some more shots for him. Hartenstein seems to be healthy. Uh started off the game with a with a beautiful block at the rim there from Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray tried to take the um the rim off, and Hartenstein was able to get back on that, man. So he does have two blocks. He got four points, six rebounds, and they're doing his job. Uh, DiVincenzo uh, shooting the ball today, uh, two for seven from three, four for nine from the field. Uh, he does have 10 points, two assists. Uh, Brunson, um, workhorse, 21 points, uh, three rebounds. He got one assist, two steals. You know, so Brunson's doing his thing. Precious, um, you know, off the bench, different role now. Uh, three points, three rebounds, two assists. Got one block. Played excellent defense on Sabonis, man, but Sabonis is just different. But definitely Precious really uh, making um, Sabonis work out there. You know, so so good showing by Precious there on the defensive side. McBride, I thought he played good defensively. Um, he got himself caught a couple times dribbling too much. You know, so right now in, in six minutes and 43 seconds, uh, no real value today for, for Deuce, man. He basically has one rebound and nothing else. His, decent, his def uh, defense was decent, you know, but um, nothing so crazy where, where he was um, impacting uh, the game like that. Uh, for some reason, Burks had a little bit more energy today. He looks like his feet was a little, little bit more plugged into the ground out there. He had um, six points, uh, two three-point shots that were they were very key. He had a, a fadeaway um, three-point shot in the corner, and he had a nice little um, uh, elbow three-point shot that that he knocked down that was really good. You know, um, you know, shout out to some of these guys. You got um, uh, Diake, you got Jeffries, Milton. You know, those guys are probably never going to play for the Knicks, man. Just you know, we just have, like I said, we, I, we have legit eleven players. Once we get healthy, we'll have 11 players that we got to think about. You know, so it's definitely going to be interesting as um, as time goes on here. Going into Sacramento, uh, you know, Harrison Barnes and, and Keegan Murray are basically two bums. You know, they, they're like run-in-the-mill uh, NBA kind of players. I thought Keegan Murray was going to be much more than that this year. You know, maybe stepped up in, into like a uh, more of a uh, scoring role, you know, like heavy scoring. But I don't think he's going to be that kind of guy. Maybe eventually he needs to get stronger. So I'm looking at his stats, uh, 14 points. He got five rebounds, one assist. I was just looking at his face and looking at the way that he, that he, um, his stature out there. I don't think he's going to have that 20 point a game scoring kind of, kind of, um, kind of edge, you know, looking at his last five games scoring wise, uh, 19, 13, three, seven, four. So he's one of those guys, man. He got to get stronger. I just don't think he has it mentally, man. So to be prolific, you know, um, but, um, you know, Sabonis, 18-7-2. You know, basically has a full game of work already, man. You know, so he's he's really pushing for 36, you know, points, seven, uh, 14 rebounds, that type of thing. That He's the type of guy that could get that, man. So if they're going to win, he's going to have to do that. You know, we got guys like Huerta is doing dog shit out there. Um, they got De'Aaron Fox kind of just going through the motions. Um, De'Aaron Fox, if he starts to get um, stingy and really starts forcing it in the second half, they might have a chance. Um, Malik Monk is another guy. If he starts chucking up shots and making them, that's the only way the Knicks are going to be in trouble. Guys like uh, Davian Mitchell and Keon Ellis and, um, and you know, guys like that, if they're going to start making threes and clutch shots like that, then we'll be in trouble. You know, but outside of that, man, I just really don't see how the Knicks, how the Knicks can lose today. You know, like I said, much respect to Sacramento. They're a very good team. But just the way, the way that I see the Knicks playing and the way that the game has been going, if all the Knicks got to do is get back into playing their, their game, get on that rebound, Secure the rebounds, and I think we win the game. You know, just it just is like like that because they don't have anybody that can stop the guys that we have on 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 the court from doing what we what we need to do. So since that's the case, 
All the Knicks got to do is get back into do, playing their game and getting those rebounds. You know, shit should be all, all, all there, all there is to it today. So I mean, it's late, man. It's, it's um eleven twenty four. So I happen to be off from work tomorrow. So that, that's a good thing. I didn't, I didn't drink today. I didn't have any alcohol in my system. I had good, um, good rest last night. You know, what I'm saying so. You know, also had a decent game, a decent, decent day, and I had a nice big time nap before the game started, man. So I'm, I'm good to go, man. So. You know this game could could could, could um is definitely gonna go into the midnights, uh. But going into double you know overtime or anything like that, man, I definitely don't want that. I, none of us want that, you know, any overtime or anything like that, man. So hopefully the Knicks can handle business, and uh, we can have a good night's sleep tonight, man. Yeah, man. So let's um let's get this back to to um to where it was. Slide this over here. Bow 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 bow. Pump that back up. Yeah, around the league, I'm looking at looking at the Minnesota and Utah. So Minnesota's in trouble, man. They lost um Cat, you know. So I'm, let's take a look at their box score real quick. So they did they did lose Cat here. So let me let me um bring this bring this back up so I can see what's going on with their box score. So um checking out their box score. Um, they started Nas Reed. So Nas Reed is good. Nas Nas Reed is basically from the metropolitan area, in New York City. Um, he's a Jersey dude. Uh, the Jelly Fan for guys that remember the Jelly Fan. He had 27 minutes tonight, four for 12. He got 12 rebounds, 13, 13 points. You know, so he's basically filling in for um, you know, for for cat. Um, they're also missing um the other guy too, um, their other center. <sighs> you know, Cal Anderson started, you got Jaden McDaniels over there. So, I mean, outside of then they got Anthony Edwards and Conley, you know, so they're gonna have to do a little bit more because Cat is out. You know, so it's interesting. They got uh, TJ Warren, uh, who they signed. That's somebody that I wanted the Knicks to sign, TJ Warren. He's like a guy that's like a former, um, like borderline on twenty point scorer for his career there. So let's look at some stats for for um, TJ Warren. TJ Warren got some years on him too, man. He's thirty years old now. Freaky injuries in his career, but as far as points per game, like you see, you see nineteen, eighteen, nineteen. So he could put the, he could put the ball in the basket. So I'm um, getting a player like that. If if he can get it going, that really could help their squad. You know, so just interested on um, taking a look at other teams out there. Uh, you know, I, I can't watch other teams, man. You know, I, I'm a Knicks fan. You know, I, I watch other teams sometimes. I'm familiar with the way other, other teams play and stuff. But I can't just sit down on, on a late night or whatever in my leisure and just watch an watch a NBA game. It's just not it's not in me, man. Like, I used to do that. But now nowadays, I just don't give a fuck about what these guys are doing. Look at um uh, the Pelicans beat Portland, as they should. You got Philadelphia just beat Charlotte and uh, Indiana and uh, Brooklyn. I believe Indiana won. Got uh, Chicago still still trying to win. I still understand with Chicago. You know, Chicago should be really tanking. They should be trying to tank. They should have, you know, Chicago should have been sellers. They should have been trying to sell all their contract guys and it just and just um build around Kobe White and those guys, you know. But it, they're still holding on. They, I don't know what's going on with them. I really don't understand that franchise. You know, you know, maybe the um the ownership they they want to keep trying to win with the superstars and stuff. Um, we got the Lakers and and Golden State had a really good game today, one twenty eight to one twenty one. You know, so um, you know, it's good to see, good to see around the league, good to follow and stuff like that. But like I said, I, I'm just not one of those guys, especially the NBA. I I could do college, man. I could watch college all day. You know, college basketball. You know, different teams. So I could watch it all day. But I don't know what it is. And maybe it has to do with the um the the personalities in the NBA and just the way the NBA is. I I just don't care to to see other teams play. Like right now, this is the the superstar age where everybody nobody could play unless they got a superstar. And all the commentators got superstars up their mouth. Like, so far up their mouth is unbelievable. You know, so that's the only thing they want to talk about, you know. So there's more to basketball than the superstars. You know, like the Knicks, are, the Knicks play some of the best team basketball that you're going to see out there, man. So when it comes to good basketball, I don't want to see that bullshit. I, I'd rather see my Knicks because I know my Knicks play good, good, play good ball. You know what I'm saying? Good defense, hard, rebounding, you know, moving the ball. You know, um, they, we, Knicks can shoot threes now. We can get to the basket. We, we can do everything. You know, so I'd rather watch our Knicks than watch some of this garbage that you see out there, modern quote unquote basketball. When it still comes down to the basics, you have to get the ball. So that that pertains to defense, that pertains to rebounding. You know, it's not just offensive rebounding. Only, only, unlike like young people keep talking about offensive rebounds. You know, um, if uh, if if the opponent misses the shot and you get the rebound, isn't that an offensive rebound? Because now you have an opportunity to score. You know, so all, all offensive rebounding and defensive rebound is the same shit. You know what I'm saying, but you know people people don't don't see that. You know they don't they don't see that when they watch the game. You know, 
You have to secure the, the, the ball no matter what it is. Get the steal, get a block, get a rebound. You know, if you, if you could do those things, you know, stay stay in front of the ball, you know, um, you know, make it tough for the, for the other team to put the ball in the rim and uh, and then rebound it, secure that rebound and get more opportunities for your for your team to score. That's all you need. So anyway, we're back in business, man. Sacramento has the ball. You got the Fox now top of the key, being gonna be DiVincenzo. Gives it over to Keegan Murray for three, misses that. He is trash, man. He really is. He looks like Chuck Person to me. I now I that's the player that he reminds me of, Chuck Person. But Chuck Person was much more solid into the ground, you know, than um than Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray is kind of floating around out there like a like a um like a dandelion or some shit. Um Brunson just just went into the mix of big time shot by Brunson there with the left hand. So, I mean, a lot of contact, no fouls being called there, man. That's one thing I forgot to mention there in the halftime report. Um, Sacramento 11 for 12, Knicks are 4 for 5, which is ridiculous, man. Harrison Barnes, they're fooling around there. Brunson steals his cookies. Brunson on the inside stops on a dime with his strong legs. On the right-hand side, it makes a, makes a layup on the left-hand side. All business, Brunson, man. It's like a fucking soldier. You know, so early on right now, we just started the, the second half here, and Sacramento's already calling timeout. I mean, so, I mean, look at Brunson. Brunson just went on a tightrope there, you know, avoiding being out of bounds. Comes in there, puts a the boy in the mixer. Ziggles, but Harrison Barnes fooling around there. Big time steal by Brunson. Big time move there too, man. On the right hand side, um, takes the the um. The, I mean, he's so strong. That's um one thing that that I would teach kids there. You got to get your legs and ankles strong, man. There's ways to do it. You know what I'm saying? And when you play, you have to be able to plant your foot, plant your foot and make stops. You know, and then make control moves. You don't have to do nothing crazy. Make that hard stop and be able to to um to go from one side and just go to the other side. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy. You don't have to go up under the shoulder and those other bullshit. Just get to one side, hit it, and then and then hit the other side. You know, simple basketball, man. So definitely appreciate um what what the Knicks bring to the table. So sliding down here. Yeah, so I mean, Kareem um, mentioned this earlier, man. Um, this guy, um, iHeart as a starter, he definitely is a starter, man. Uh, Mitchell Robinson is not a starter, man. If when he comes back, you know, he's definitely going to be needed. But situation, Mitchell Robinson is situational. Like you can't rely on a dude that can't make it, that can't create his own shot, cannot pass, and um, he can't make free throws. You cannot have a guy like that playing playing forty minutes. <clears throat> it's ridiculous, man. But can but can he contribute in a, in fifteen minutes? Absolutely. But he would have to give us the hardest 15 minutes you've ever seen. You know, uh, Mitch Robinson has a tendency of the playing soft because he doesn't want to get in foul trouble. But in 15 minutes, he ha- he would have to go breakneck in 15 minutes. And that, that's that's going to be the, what what um what makes us deadly, having Mitch Robinson playing 15 hard-ass minutes. Not worrying about fouling out. Just do your shit. Play extremely hard and be intimidating. You know what I'm saying? Let Hartenstein worry about all the, all the other stuff, you know? Shout out to DiVincenzo. One thing about DiVincenzo, he's always under control, man. That's one thing I will say. He's always under control. He can miss a few shots. He never loses his confidence. He keeps shooting. At some point in the game, he's going to get hot, you know, and that's what shooters do, and that's what he's been doing. Defensive-wise, rebounding-wise, everything, man, he does everything so well. He's so locked in. He's an absolute anchor at that starting shooting guard spot. You know, so that's another thing too, man. When guys are talking about trades, getting DeJounte Murray and this, that, and the other, I think the right move was not to get DeJounte Murray. Having DiVincenzo as the, the starter at, at the two right at this point at this moment in time is the only move. You know. You know, guys like Brunson, Brunson made a big time move there. They talk about Brunson doesn't play defense, man. He plays really good defense. You know, he plays really good defense. He's not um uh, Gary Payton out there. You know, or, you know, or whatever your favorite defender, but um, but he's still adequate, adequate NBA defender. So bonus just took Hartenstein to the basket. He misses the easy layup. We got Hart with the rebound. He's looking Hartenstein with it. Gives it over Devin Tense. Devin Tense goes around the screen, nice and smooth, but he got clipped there. So surprised the referees called that. That's the game right there. That's that's why Sacramento's so close. So I mean, if you even this up, if you if you add six points to, to the Knicks total here as far as free throws, just simply add six points to give us ten. Um, the Knicks will have sixty three to forty eight right now. You know, so that's that's the game right there. 
Hartenstein with a nice rebound off a of miss there. Brunson tap pass over to DiVincenzo in the corner. Give it to me, baby. Misses it. <clears throat> Here comes um, Sacramento. We got Huerta looking for somebody to get the ball up to. Keegan Murray throws it out of bounds there. Still going to be Sacramento ball. Knicks um, playing some good defense. Once again, man, for those who don't, don't appreciate the crunching in the mic, sorry about that. But this is not network television. This is YouTube. Um, he goes on um, De'Aaron Fox, comes around the screen there. Good defense by DiVincenzo on the backside, slaps the ball out of bounds. So two good, two big-time plays there to break up Sacramento offense. Sacramento's still going to have 15 um, seconds on that shot clock. So they're going to uh, rebound, excuse me, inbound underneath the basket. Got a nice pass in there to Keegan Murray. Josh Hart had to stop the ball, slapped him kind of hard there. Yeah, I'm glad that Keegan Murray didn't turn around, you know, Mr. Tough Guy type of thing, man. It is what it is there. He gets the ball inside. You got to stop the ball. So I don't know if the referees are going to want to review that. It looks like they are. It's fucking garbage, man. So they got to review it. He got popped a little bit, so now they're going to review it, and then they're going to freaking emasculate Josh Hart. They're going to kick him out the game. They're going to suspend him for 20 games, whatever. It's freaking nonsense. The way things are, like like I said, they have um guys in New Jersey that watch um they're watching the games too. You know what I'm saying? So like making the call in game shouldn't be so hard. They have so many eyes on the game that it shouldn't be that hard. So I mean, Joshua did slap um my, my man in the, in the face, but it was incidental. It wasn't maliciously going for the face. He was going to stop the ball. He did, but it's just the aftermath of it is to get popped in the face after the fact. So it shouldn't be a flagrant foul. So the referees are looking, man. I, I can see the high intensity. It's look, look like look like CSI, you know, like they look like they're looking to solve a murder right now. It's like ridiculous. So right now on the mic, they're talking to somebody. They're talking to somebody in New Jersey right now on the microphone. You know, so it's ridiculous. They're on the mic talking to talking to somebody on in New Jersey. They're trying to figure out what they're gonna do. You know, I believe they have a referee in the game in the game too that's watching on on the screen. You know, like the substitute referee or whatever the fuck. I think I think they have somebody watching that also. So I want to see what's going on here. Upon review, we have a wind up and unnecessary contact that makes oh. contact to the head and face. Oh, get the fuck out of here! So they're gonna say is unnecessary contact contact there by the referees. So I mean, whatever, man. So what are they gonna they're gonna um um suspend him, you know, void his contract and shit like that. Like, golly. Shit is ridiculous, man. So he said Donovan Mitchell's not playing Monday. He's gonna be another one who misses um who will who miss out on on all NBA. Okay. <clears throat> I feel like that's something that should have been happening though. Especially nowadays where where, where players just take days off for whatever reason. So if you're not gonna play, you should not get an award. It's as simple as simple mathematics, man. If you're not putting in the work, you shouldn't get a, a reward. You know what I'm saying? So you shouldn't expect like to to get accolades if you're not putting in the work. <sighs> yeah, excuse me with the with the snorting in the, in the in the mic, guys. So Keegan Murray's gonna get two free throws with his bitch ass. I mean, he does not look like an NBA player. So he knocks down two shots there. Very soft looking, man. In the eyes, in the body, his body looks soft. You know, he just does not look like a strong NBA player, man. You know? So here we go. Um, Fox there, pump fakes, gives it over to Sabonis. Free throw line, looking to get a pass inside, number 13. Keegan Murray kicks it back out to, who is this? Harrison Barnes? Harrison Barnes with, like, the old man layup there with a right hand. Harrison Barnes has been old since he came into the league. I think he came into the league at 19 or something like that. And he's been looking old since then. Good even Chenzo gets the ball up top. A lot of pushing. Hartenstein has it. Jab steps. He's um kind of too high there. Looking to get the ball up. Because trying to get the Brunson. He's in, in cha instead changes his mind. Catches Devin Chenzo on a cut, man. Beautiful cut there, but stolen there by Sacramento. Sacramento basket hugging. Uh Fox was able to get the layup. So it's 57 to 54 here. Uh, these free throws are, are crazy right now. So I mean, like like um like Trish said, man, four uh four points there, but at the moment, uh Sacramento has 13 points there off of free throws. You know, so um Brunson jab steps looking. K 
Kicks it back out DiVincenzo over to Josh Hart. And a cornerback to DiVincenzo. OG's there. OG's wide open. DiVincenzo wasn't able to give it to him, but still gets it to him. But we got a shot clock violation, it looks like. So the Knicks, um, Knicks are kind of are floundering a little bit. Sacramento's taking advantage of the mistakes the Knicks are making. But good action here. Good um, NBA action by both teams. Uh, he said, um, they, they might as well make me all. I got you. So Geraldine, I thought Clyde uh, just didn't uh, make it out to the West Trip. So what happened there, Geraldine? Geraldine says something. Um, something happened to Clyde. So I don't know, man. Clyde is old now, so Clyde um doesn't want to travel as much. So I I think they were saying that about Clyde on um, the that um next season, which is this season. They were saying that he didn't doesn't really want to travel with the team as much. So um, so let me see something um with Clyde here. Walt Clyde Frazier. So I just put Walt Clyde Frazier and then Walt Cliff Frazier popped up. Try it again. Walt Clyde Frazier. All right, so here we go. So under Walt Clyde Frazier, this is a simple Google search here, guys. The little Walt, Walt Clyde Frazier. Any news here? No news. Got an Instagram and stuff like that. No news as far as that is concerned. Uh, talking about his future and stuff like that. My man is old as fuck, man. This guy, um, Clyde Frazier. Clyde Frazier is um, he's 78 years old. So, I mean, at 78 years old, to be traveling around the airplane like that and, and doing all the stuff that he does, man, I just don't, I, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. You know, do it right now. You know, I'm not even 78 years old. I don't know if I could be flying up in, 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 a, in a plane all the time. Hick of Sacramento, man. Fox was able to get his first really swiping steal there he got. Cross-court pass there to Barnes. He knocks down that three. Was it Barnes that shot that? Yes, it is. Barnes just hit, hit a three-point shot. So um, they got the momentum now. Knicks are still up 58 to 57. Yeah, I got eight minutes and 30 seconds on the clock here. So I see Cully talking, man. Let me get me get um get get caught up with um get caught up with um Cully and stuff. Uh, Josh has it now, dribbling up to the top of the key there, driving on Harrison Barnes sidestep. Ooh, all the way to the basket, no good. DiVincenzo ends up with the rebound, but they're gonna say out of bounds. Knicks ball. Yeah, so Cully says uh, facts. Uh, you shouldn't. I agree. It's unfortunate that if if you in injured, but uh, we got to give credit to the the guys play, and uh, produce um the, the guys that play and produce all NBA stats. Yeah, yeah, it's weird, man. I mean, because I mean, you know, like if you like, you know, if you if you don't play, like you shouldn't get the award. I don't understand, but I, I don't understand why people are crying about not getting the awards. Like, oh man, you know, MB needs to get the award. This any other? He's one of the. Yeah, but I mean, it just sounds. You know what it sounds like to me? It just sounds like oh, 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 that's what it sounds like to me, man. You know, it's just like, oh, 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 that's what it sounds like to me. You know, like like these guys don't have to get the reward, get the award. Like, what's the big deal? If the guy doesn't get the award. Like, uh, Michael Jordan was the greatest basketball player to ever play, man. So every year he should get the MVP. You know, I don't give a fuck what anybody else is doing. Jordan, as long as Jordan is playing, Jordan should get the MVP. You know what I'm saying? Especially when he retired. Uh, Shaq, you know, every single year the, the Shaq is on the floor, the Shaq should have won the MVP every single year. You know what I'm saying? But um, other people have won MVP, you know, um, you know, for various different reasons and stuff like that. LeBron James, too, for like the last 20 years or so, every single year he should have won MVP. You know, every single year that he that he played, um, you know, I would say like 15 years out of that, he should have won MVP at all 15 years. You know what I'm saying, but it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You don't you don't just give the um the um award to one person every single year, you know. And then the way people talk about it, you think that they, they give like five or six MVPs every year. The way they be goggling these guys, you know, it's making no sense. So I mean, I don't I I really don't enjoy the star the star basketball. You know, back in the days, you know, I guess they started with Jordan. You got to have a superstar, you know. But that's the bullshit because before that, there's been plenty of teams that had um stars and big time teams and stuff like that. It's still a team sport. Like Jordan didn't win till he got his team, you know. Shout out to to the to the um, the Lakers, you know, the Lakers and the Celtics. But the Lakers and the Celtics, they had like a five, you know, four Hall of Famers on, on the squad at any at any given time on both teams. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have a good team in order to win. It's not just Magic um won those championships because because it's Magic. Magic also played with Kareem. He also played with a bunch of other guys too, you know, on that squad. You know, the the uh, Larry Bird. It wasn't just Larry Bird. Everybody keeps forgetting about Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale's a Hall of Famer. You're talking about Robert Parrish. He was a Hall of Famer. They got quite a few other guys 
that um ended up on that squad. Um, Dennis Johnson, he's a Hall of Famer, man. So, um, he also he also played with um um uh, tiny uh, tiny Archibald. He's also a Hall of Famer. You know, saying so, so you need um players, man. Not just one guy's gonna get it. You know, you need players out there. You know, so it kills me when when um a guy they keep talking about Giannis, man. Is it Gian? Oh, 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 to the club, oh, you know, like what the hell, man? You know, they keep talking about those guys. It's like, come on. You know, I, I understand these guys are good players, man. But how is the team? How is it working for them as, as a team? Boston is a good team. They've been beating everybody. You know, but you keep talking. You keep talking about their superstar. Who are the superstar? You know. Like, man, get it, get it out of you know, you know, these guys gotta gotta keep the um, you know, keep it out their mouths, man. Shout out to Luca. I, uh, that was excellent. I, I heard uh, uh today, uh, Tony Parker. I saw a clip that um, they were talking about the best European players in basketball, right? So um, you know, they they mentioned Dirk, they mentioned whatever, but then um, Dirk was talking about Luca, and Tony Parker had to cut him off. That 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 uh, Luca don't know how to win, which is pure facts, you know. So. But even Dirk is like, oh, come on, man. You know, really? Like, like he was like in shock that somebody would talk badly about the star player. But, you know, it's not all about a star player. Luca does not know how to win. If he did know how to win, then he would be um, definitely in better shape right now. But Luca's going to be like Jordan. It's going to take a few years for him to get it together. So we got DiVincenzo with another three-point shot that knocks that down. So the Knicks up 61 to 57. So that's that's what it's all about. So, I mean, you know, Luca might need to leave Dallas. If there's a team that, that Luca, oh man, DiVincenzo would have would have transitioned in three. Misses that. Josh Hart fighting on the inside. Now he almost broke his back there, but he doesn't get the rebound. Hartenstein's directing the defense there, making sure everybody's right. He gets back on his man. Knicks are doing good. Sabonis is like unbelievable, man, with the different things that he's doing. Comes inside, tries to go up and under. Good defense by Hartenstein. Oh, Darren Fox traveled, bro. Good defense by the Knicks. Knocked it out of bounds, man. But he definitely traveled there before he drove, before he drove the ball there. I felt like he moved his pivot foot. Yeah, man, but it, it drives me crazy hearing these guys talking about superstars all the fucking time. It's annoying, man. You know, it's annoying. Yeah, you need superstars to win in this league. It's a player's league. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I know what I hear? Oh, 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 that's what I hear. God damn. I apologize if, I, if I'm making anybody uncomfortable. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, you know, whatever, man. This is the Dire Next Podcast. If you don't know me, I'm, I'm Mr. Eru. Die on Eru, and I, I don't have no sense, okay? So good good play there by, by um Sabonis. I like the way Sabonis plays. He plays a little bit dirty sometimes, you know, but um, but I like the way. I appreciate good post play, you know, good footwork and, and moves in the pace and the, in the paint. I appreciate that stuff. Here goes Brunson, booty bump in there. Darren Fox is a little bit too overzealous there. So Brunson had to bump uh, Fox to get him off him. Ooh, beautiful pass in there by OG, but OG got to look to score. Brunson has it being guarded by two people. Josh Hart has it. He cuts and drives. A lot of contact here by the, by the Sacramento squad. Bru um, DiVincenzo there comes in there, double teamed. Josh Hart, he got to get the shot up. Misses that off the front rim. Um, Hartenstein taps it. That should be Nick's ball. So, I mean, there's a lot of physicality. The Knicks are getting bumped and dumped like crazy, man. And um, this note that they, they just refuse to blow that whistle. So, Hartenstein's going to come out. Looks like... um. Looks like it's gonna be Sacramento ball. No, sec. Um, Hartenstein's back in, so he just was walking up the court. Unbelievable, man! So much contact, you know, in this game, and the Knicks are just not getting any calls. Huerta now with the with his um, I don't know, sh uh, freaking strawberry shortcake sneakers there. Number five there comes in. He tried to dunk it, and it, uh, he comes in and tries to dunk it, Mister Mister Darren Fox. They barely touch him, and he gets a foul instantly. So I want to see the replay. Look at him going baseline. Good move there. Comes up. He barely gets touched, man. Come on. That's a foul. As much as contact the Knicks have had, you know, in, in, in this game. Look at his drive. He drives in there. You know, is that a foul? There's no contact. Where is the fucking contact that you need to call a foul there? It's fucking garbage, man. So anyway, let me, I, I see you guys talking. I see um my man Cully's back. Uh... Yeah, definitely a chippy game, man. But I mean, the referees are calling it one way. Um, the Knicks still only have five, um, you know, five out of six for free throws, and um, Sacramento has sixteen points for free throws. It's bullshit, man. That's the game right there. Unbelievable. 
Yeah, man, it's like a freaking Listerine commercial. All the gargling and the, the, the um that these guys do. DiVincenzo fakes a three. Um, Barnes a little bit too tight. They should have called a foul there. DiVincenzo has to get to the basket. Hartenstein gets the rebound, kicks it out to OG. OG doesn't want to shoot. He gives it to Brunson. He wants to. Look at the Knicks fighting for rebounds. Hartenstein, DiVincenzo doing a really good job there. OG had a nice cut to the basket. Um, but they're gonna say it's gonna be Knicks ball. OG would have had a dunk there if that if that ball got to him. Yeah, man, it's like a fucking Listerine commercial. You know, this this whole dog, that's all they want to talk about. And it's annoying too because what, what's the point of having NBA analysts because they have the NBA experience or pro um, female WNBA analysts out there? What's the point of having expert analysts if they're gonna still give you the same bullshit commentary? You know what I'm saying? Because that, that that tells me right there that it's not um expert commentary. It's just um company commentary. That's what the company wants them to do, you know, because when they do their briefing and they have the team, their, their meetings before the um, podcast um, or before the, the shows, that's what they want. You know, they have the team in it. Listen, we need we need more Listerine, guys, you know, a little bit more Listerine tonight. Unbelievable. So Trish, she says, um, uh, do you see Bobby Mark's list of everyone missing MVP? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they won't be making. Yeah, it's pretty long. I get it. But listen, if guys want their want their wars, they need to show up. You know. Speaking of showing up, man, I keep forgetting to do it. I've been I've been doing this for a while, and I keep forgetting. Yo, please hit the subscribe and the thumbs up if you're coming in and taking a look. If you if you enjoy what's going on, man, just support the kid, man. Drop a um, you know, it's like dropping a, a quarter in, in into the bucket, man. Just hit the thumbs up on the on the way in and way out, baby. Brunson in there just gets a lot of contact, comes in there and shoots a shot. Sixty three to sixty three. Sabonis is pushing with the ball there. Uh, so um, Barnes in there. Knicks are fighting for the rebounds, man. Josh Hart gets his spins on the pivot, doesn't travel. Brunson, full head of steam, kicks it out to OG. Give it to me, baby. Corner, transition three, misses it. Brunson chases down the rebound. Knicks have been getting a lot of second chance points in the second half here. Brunson definitely hard dribbles, man, keeping it alive. DiVincenzo has it. Good defense by Sacramento. OG ends up with it again. Doesn't want to shoot it inside. Finally gets a shot up on the rim there, but they call it travel. This guy, OG, man. I know he hasn't played in a while, so you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. But I mean, the motherfucker needs to needs to get the ball and needs to attempt to shoot, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, Fox. You know, Fox is a, is a Nick. You could tell. You know, you know, he's like he reminds me of um of what's the name, uh, Jeremy Grant or, or whatever his name was that we drafted uh, out of Notre Dame. You know, that, that should have been De'Aaron Fox for us, man. So we definitely have been looking for a player like him. But I don't mind Brunson, you know. <sighs> Steve Vincenzo lets it fly off the front of the rim. Next with another rebound. Josh Hart gets it, and they're going to call a loose ball foul there on Sacramento. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. You know, so one thing about the Knicks, man, they're not getting calls, but they're staying in the game and still playing hard, man. So I, that's what I appreciate with the Knicks. That as long as, even though we're not getting calls, we're still definitely attacking, attacking. We ha it's not stopping us from doing our job. So the Knicks finally miss again, man. So 63-63, Sacramento's coming down there. Fox is looking to take the lead there. Sabonis has a spin move, but DiVincenzo gets a strip, big time defensive play by DiVincenzo. Josh Hart looking for looking for a Nick open. Precious is open at the top of the key here. He's holding on to the ball to that pivot foot is sliding a little bit. Devin Chenzo has it. Back to Josh Hart. OG again in the corner. He finally gets a shot up. Front of the rim, no good. So I think OG doesn't have confidence in his shot right now because of the elbow. I get it. You know, he's still playing good defense there. Top of the key shot. So nobody can make a shot here. Also, Harrison Barnes falling asleep there. Gets the ball. Gets a nice little layup. So Harrison Barnes finally gets a loose ball. You know, gets the right bounce and able to get a layup. So Tom Tibble is going to call a timeout. Knicks have not been able to score. So, like I said, this guy, um, OG with the elbow. What's going on with my camera, man? Why am I frozen on the screen? Come on, wake up. Wake up. Why am I frozen on the screen? So, hopefully that fixes itself there, man. But, I mean, OG definitely with the elbow, you know, it's definitely his confidence in the shot is gone. So, what's up with this camera, guys? Do I have to stop the camera? Let me stop the camera. Let me bring it back. Stop the camera. And bring it back. Stop the camera and bring it back. And let's get it. 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 Come on, man. Anyway, this camera's acting up a little bit. So let, let me um let me actually remove myself from the stream and see what happens.
Am I back? Nope. Can you guys hear me though? So as long as you guys can hear me, everything should be good. But yeah, man. Shout out to Jeremy Grant there. Jeremy Grant, um, now nah, we we drafted Frank instead, I believe. Um, shaking my head. Well, um, it was uh, not not um yeah, Jer- it's Jerry and right? Jerry and Grant. Yeah, Frank is another one though. But I mean Jerry and Grant, we drafted Jerry and first. Um, who did Jerry and Jerry came in with um with Chris Stapps. That was the same draft. We had drafted Jerry and and, and Chris Stapps. So um, you know, him at point guard, you know, he's a Notre Dame. So I mean, if he if he would have been the guy that we that we expected, then um, you know, then you know, it would have changed history actually. Um, Frank Nilakina was supposed to have been the same, you know, same six foot five um point guard. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. The six foot five point guard that could score, play defense, stuff like that. So that's the Aaron Fox, you know. So the Knicks have been chasing that that player for a while, but um, yeah, man, Brunson is that guy as he just comes in and lays it up right in their face to tie the game 65-65. Yeah, man, I love this team too, man. Hopefully, we start getting these whistles. Maybe in the playoffs, we'll, we'll start to get that. Yeah, he definitely has deer in the hair light, deer, deer in the headlights kind of thing going on. Ah, Sabonis so gets it. Has glue on his fingers there. Presses him has been playing fantastic defense on him. So he just falls to the ground, and they call um a foul, I, I believe. But Presses has definitely been let, been making uh, Sabonis work tonight. Uh, Sabonis still a good player, man. Eighteen and ten at the moment, only three turnovers. Uh, two assists to three turnovers, not not the best there, but um, Press has definitely been making him work, you know, in the minutes that he has been getting. Let me take a look at the minutes. There. So, so bonus is at the free throw line again on some bullshit. So, Precious right now has been playing 14 minutes, uh, two points, three rebounds, two assists, one block. You know, hopefully, he gets to play um, some extra minutes here in this third quarter and maybe into the fourth quarter as well. We'll see how it goes there. You know, maybe um since um OG's not playing well, maybe Precious needs to get the bulk of the minutes right now. You know, I know Tom Thibodeau would like to get OG going. He already played 26 minutes already. He doesn't have it scoring. You know, so but Precious plays good defense, man. So Precious needs to get the minutes. You know, because Precious um is um is an active scorer. He's, he can score still right now. So I, you know, if Precious is the one, we need to go to him right now. So my camera's back. It looks like. Yeah, man. So here goes um the Knicks there. Brunson with another shot. So the Knicks are up 68 to 66. Sacramento's coming down looking to get something off here. So um Harrison Barnes drives in there, takes the thing, kind of awkward, you know, shot. He traveled, he might have traveled, he might have fouled, he might have did everything, but he still got the shot off. So um 68, 68, hard game here. This guy Brunson got 33 points, man. He's being double teamed. He's trying to get the ball out of his hands. They threw him to the ground. It's like, damn, when are you going to call a foul? Golly, they they whipping his ass. When the hell are you going to call a foul? Damn, son. Look at this. He comes right into the double team, of course. He still holds his ground. They bumping and dumping him, slapping and whapping him. Like, what the fuck? Are they going to call a travel? Look, 23 said he wants to travel. Man, they will fucking his ass up. And look, he's talking. Brunson is ignoring his ass. 23 is talking. Brunson, man. Brunson said, man, fuck you. DiVincenzo gets it. Back to Brunson. They're trying to match him. So Brunson there with a double team. He Give it to me, Bogey. I mean, Bogey got him knocked down these three-point shots, man. Wide open three-point shots, man. If he can't make those, those three-point shots, then it's no point. So Monk, finally, Knicks are getting some calls here. Monk and these guys slapping and whapping it. I, I feel like the referee shouldn't call anything, though, to tell you the truth. All the slapping and whapping, popping and bopping. They collided with each other. That should be a non-call there. Let the guys play. You know, come on. That's not that, you know. That's like like a, a insurance accident there. You know, it's like 60-40. 60-40% there. They're trying to throw a double team at, at Brunson and get his ball out of his hands. Knicks is still good. Josh Hart was able to power that layup there with the left hand on, on De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, salute to, to Gillian. What's up, Gideon? Amankwa. So bonus has it now. Free throw. He had a free throw jump shot. Drives to the basket. Uh, gets a nice spin on Precious, man. But Precious has been letting them work. But but Sabonis has still been taking advantage of him. Josh Hart full head of steam trying to find something. DiVincenzo has it. Back to Brunson. So here comes Sacramento, man. Uh, you got Keon, you know, guarding him one-on-one. Got 11 seconds here on the shot clock. Got a minute and 38 seconds. I don't know what the Knicks are doing here. Seven seconds on the shot clock here. Trying to drive. Got a triple team there. Brunson gets the ball up on the rim. Keegan Murray with the rebound. Here comes Sacramento, full head of steam there. 
Darren Fox there throws an alley oop to Monk. So they take the lead, 72 to 70. They're getting a little bit too happy out there. The Knicks are working hard, though. DiVincenzo brings the ball across the timeline, taking a sweet ass time. So I, I just did not agree with the Knicks holding there um to the last second to get the shot off. It was not a good idea. Because DiVincenzo fakes the shot on the inside, up and under layup, no good. But he is gonna get the foul. Two free throws is coming to him. Shit, man. So yeah, I just I did not agree with that last possession, man. But it is what it is. Good alley oop there by De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox to Monk. Fox to Monk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is what it is. Right now, it's a little bit of a storm. We're only in the third quarter. You know, it feels like the fourth quarter. Yeah, but we're only in the third quarter. Right now, we just need to weather the storm. The Sacramento Kings definitely are just, um, they're a little bit hot. But even though they're hot right now, they still can't fuck with us. That's, that's where I'm coming with it. You know? Yeah, I'm just making the comparison with the six foot five guys because you know Jeremy was six foot five. You know, uh, Frank. Of course, you, you mentioned Frank. Frank six foot five. You know, we were just chasing that type of player at the time. You know, which is kind of garbage. You know, and when you we, when you start chasing for a particular type of player, then you're dead. You're just dead. You know. We see G money. Oh, kitty, him. My bad. Uh, absolutely. That's our game, though. That's that's the Knicks bread and butter, fighting for these rebounds. Like I said, to say, I was saying at the halftime, you know, rebounding. That's how we're gonna win this game. You know, that's how we're gonna win any game. We have to dominate rebounding wise. So so far since the halftime, thirty-five to twenty-nine. So the Knicks got up on their rebounding game. So that's the, absolutely what's holding us down here in this um in the second half. Uh, passing, let's see, steals wise, is um Knicks are up in steals. Um, as far as blocks. Uh, Knicks are up on steals and blocks too, man. So Knicks are just extra a active there. Uh, but Sacramento, they're making bullshit shots. You know, we got a guy, uh, what's this guy? Um, quite a few guys are scoring though. They got like four guys in double figures. Anyway, back to the game. We got Burks with it now. Burks is um, low, dribbling, dribbling, looking, looking. Floater on the inside, he knocks that down. Like I said, um, he's going to take Burks' time to get himself situated. So I think he looks a little bit more stronger out there on the court. He allowed Monk to get his shot off there. Josh Hart gets slapped there, and the referee called the foul. I can't believe it. I can't believe the referee called the foul there. Look at Trish. Trish is always there with the with the um, deep stats there. So that's the first um, trip for the free throw line for the Knicks since the first quarter. Sheesh. Yeah, so it's free throws right now. The Knicks are 7 for 9 at the moment. Uh, Sacramento is 19 for 22. That is no good. It would, it's not like the Knicks are not driving. Guy like Josh Hart got four, and uh, Brunson's getting popped around like crazy, you know. But everybody else is um is attacking too. Nobody can get any free throw, anything going. This guy Bogdanovich, man, he's zero for two tonight, one for five, uh, zero for two from three, only two points. He's got to get some. He got to. He got to score, man. He's not bringing nothing to the table if he can't put that ball in the basket, you know. But at the same time, too, I feel like the Knicks need to put them in better, better position to get those type of shots, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I wish we could take a look at Shake Milton, too, but I think Tom Thibodeau, Tom Thibodeau's just making hard assessments on players, man, making hard decisions, man. That's the coach's job, though. You got to make those hard decisions. So he goes down. Fox is driving there. He gets into his, into the dotted line area. Gets a good pro shot. Ah oh, man, little collision. So the referees they didn't call anything. They're gonna call a jump ball. I think they should call the jump ball. I mean, this guy, um, this guy Monk is pissed because there's two collisions there. You know, he, he's mad about the last co collision, but he's staring at the ref. He's standing out of bounds, staring at the ref. Technical fouls, man. So a collision. Josh Hart might should have got caught with the foul there. That should have been a Josh Hart foul. I give him that. So I mean, I, it is frustrating, but I mean, guys, but you know, balling up the fists and staring at the guys—that's some little kid shit, man. You need to get that shit together. You know, balling up the fists and staring at somebody tough, man. Cut the shit, man. So timeout on the floor. Uh, you know, if anything, it should be a jump ball. 
So, I mean, like, even when you play on the, on the basketball courts, right, I hate arguing with people. You know, if, if you want to argue a call, I'm not arguing a call. Listen, jump. We're going to do a jump ball. You know, if, if it's not a jump ball, then, then we're just going to, like, shoot for it. And that's it. But some people don't want to shoot for it. They just want the call. And this, that, and the other. Man, so, listen, man, let's just keep it moving. Just let somebody shoot for it, and then I'm good with that. You know, so one thing, Josh Hart collided with them. But I, I think Monk threw his body at Josh Hart just now, man. So they're going to review it. This is garbage. Fans in the front. They, they're reviewing it and stuff like that, man. But my thing is, um, you know, if, if they're both running for the ball, you shouldn't call anything. But my thing, they, they, they want to look at Josh Hart, whether or not he's coming into the loose ball fall. But look, look at the way Monk uh, runs on the play and positions his body to try to cut off Josh Hart. So that's another issue. You know, so it should be a non-call. Ball was last touched by Malik Monk. It'll be New York ball on the side. New York yeah, that's the right call. Back. And they have a further challenge. So the Knicks win the challenge. Yeah, Knicks win the challenge. So, I mean, I, th I think it's the right play. That is the right play. The referee's got the play right. So, I mean, you got to give credit where credit is due. They did. They made the right call just now. You know, it's incidental content. You know, they made, made the contact. You know what I'm saying? They they want to like Joshua still complaining there. Now they're getting into into physics and shit like that, man. Fuck it, just play. This argument right here should be over, man. Get the fucking let's play. You know the argument here with these guys, you know, it's wasting time. You know, let's let's get the ball and bounce. Let, let's get the ball and bounce. Let's play this game. You know, shout out to the young lady with the with, with the bedazzled sweater there. You know, Lord have mercy. Nichols Brunson bringing the ball up the court. Yeah, who is this lady here with the with the bedazzled shirt there? Wow, this guy Keon just stripped um, Brunson there as to end. Oh, and he almost made it. Wow. So this guy Keon, he's definitely um got on one. You know, he got that bug eye bug eye look. I've seen plays like that throughout history, man. You know, so he's a he's a good um good player, man. I, I give, give credit to him. He's not afraid. You know, definitely not afraid to get up in there and play that defense. So let's get familiar with my man Ke um, Keon Ellis there. He played 18 minutes tonight. So, uh, I, you know, you get to see guys every once in a while. Uh, six foot three, 175, very light on, on his ass, like I said. Um, is he a point guard? Is he a shooting guard? He's neither. Uh, points per game this year, only three, only 1.5 rebounds. Um, this is his second year um, this year, only 12 minutes per game. He's playing out of necessity, uh, but he's definitely playing good defense and stuff like that, man. So that's what's actually getting him out there. Uh, they got him at 38% from the from three to um this year, 44 from the field. So he's an up and coming player to see what he, what he can do. But that 175 pounds, man, he's definitely going to just be a backup guy, you know, depending on what's what's going on there. But he's definitely going to be a backup, energy defensive kind of guy for for um for them at the moment. Yeah, but just you know, just giving a little highlight, man. The guy's playing really good. You definitely appreciate dudes with heart like that. You know, guys like Keon Ellis, you got to circle. You know, circle a guy like Keon Ellis um, because you never know, like, down the line, somebody so young, like I said, he's only 24, you know, so you got, you got some time left. You know, so, like, if you're looking for a player down the line, you know, you can you can um, look at your Rolodex and say, okay, let's pick up this guy Keon Ellis because he, he could play some defense and stuff like that. So just keeping mental notes on guys like that around the league, you know. Yeah, man, I hate guys that do that. Guys do that at work, too. They get mad and they start – you know, um, squeezing their fist tight and looking, look, oh, I'm so upset at you. Oh, like, uh, like, man, if you don't cut it out. Like, it's not about fighting, man. You know, like fighting is trash. Like ha having a, having a fist fight with somebody is such a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? So to get that mad to, to, um, to, to do that. But right initially, like, it's like you're a little baby, you know, it's like a little baby, like, like my, my kids, my kids are starting to experiment with that, with that feeling. You know, so it's it's more about like trying to explain the feeling to them, not to really intimidate them. Sometimes I get into, I you know, I get caught into that. Well, they'll do it, and then I get into the dad, phys, you know, not physical, but just intimidating dad thing. But sometimes you gotta let you gotta explain to kids what that feeling is and how to how to get through it. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of, a lot of parents don't do that. You know, sometimes a lot of parents, um, you know, um, instill these these traits in people, you know, because they want their kid to be the alpha and all this other bullshit. You know, I've, I've had conversations with parents, so that's why I don't like to fuck with PTA and 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 pickups and stuff like that, because I don't want to interact with no no parents. And so the, some of these people, these parents out here are fucking garbage. You know, they should not even have kids. Have beautiful kids. The kids are are beautiful, but the parents, you can see, they're trying to instill bad bad um stuff into them. You know, it's like you know. Anyway, Bogey has it. 
Gets it back to Burks. Burks splits it, and it comes in there with a with that floater. That floater is bullshit that he has, man. He comes in and he gets thrown to the ground. No foul call. So here comes Sacramento. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Here goes Keegan Murray with a transition three point shot. He knocks that down. So that gives him seventy seven to seventy five. So I mean, Burks, man, with that bullshit floater, I just don't understand it. Somebody six foot six driving to the lane like that with a floater that looks like that is ridiculous. Here we go. Splits the defense. Comes around. Back to Bogey. Bogey jab steps. Comes in. He gets easily stripped. Now, here we go. Sacramento coming down. Monk has it. Monk looks like he wants to let that fly. Monk is dribbling. Crossover. Step back. Jump shot. I knew he wanted to let it fly. Off the front of the rim. Nick slapped it out. Right back to Monk. So, what's they going to call? Loose ball foul on the Knicks? Bullshit. Oh, man. So, um, here we go. This guy, Bogey, comes in. Easily stripped. Come on, guys. This guy, Alec Burke, with the bullshit floater. Come on, guys. This is not what I, what I signed up for. It's late. It's after midnight now. Shout out to the time right now. Is it after midnight yet? Because uh, the time on my clock is wrong. It's on 12.04 now. Deuce McBride. So this is the make and break lineup right now. They got Deuce McBride out there. They got another shot by, by um, Fox. Alex Len fighting for the rebound. He goes out of bounds. That should be Nick's ball. So the guy's just playing hard there. The referee's jumping in and thought it was going to be a fight. But they just lost their footing. It's all good. You know, the guy's dapped it up just now. Locked in, playing some good basketball. 77 to 75. Nick's are down. He goes Deuce, crosses over, back to Josh. Josh over to Bogey. Bogey fakes it. Back to Bogey. Bogey sides up, goes back around to Josh. No spacing by the Knicks here. Gets it back to Deuce. Deuce has to do something. Here we go. Back to Precious. Back to Deuce. Deuce is stuck in that thing now. Two seconds on the shot clock, nigga. Shoot the ball. Did I just say the N-word? Oh, my God. He just shot the ball. Shot clock violation. Like, God damn. Yes, I just said the N-word, man. So, ah, yeah, yeah. It's not enough, enough, enough of you guys in the chat today. I know it's a late game, but not enough of you guys in the chat for me to, for me to do a, a giveaway. You know what I'm saying? But um, I did just say the N-word. That's my cardinal sin of um of the podcast. Sometimes I, I just let it go sometimes. I don't mean to do that. But um I definitely owe you one, man. So I got I think I might have to stack it up. So um remind me if it happens again or something like that, remind me, I'll stack it up. You know, so instead of giving 25, maybe I give a little bit more next time. You know, if that if that happens again, just re- you gotta remind me, stack it up next time. You know, so fighting for loose balls there. Is it going to be a jump? Nope. Yep, it's going to be a jump ball. Ah, this is one of those things, man. Five seconds on the shot clock, too. They're going to keep it that way off the jump ball. So I don't know if the shot clock resets after the jump ball. Let's see what happens there. Jump ball pops out. Sacramento gets it. No, it does not. Three seconds. Shot is up now from Fox. No good. Knicks with the rebound, Josh Hart. So here goes the Knicks looking to get a transition three by Bogey. And he misses another one. It's like, sheesh. Like, like Fournier can do that, man. There goes Fox with the crossover. Now he's going one-on-one. Takes the bump. Can't make the shot, but definitely gets the foul. That's one thing the referees know how to do, get these motherfuckers fouls. Oh, my God. What a, what a crazy game. This is a crazy game. They got five guys in double figures for Sacramento. Sabonis with 21. You got Matt Burns with 13. Murray with 11. Fox with 17. And you got Monk with 13. So that's right on brand for them. So, so, so we're not letting bums do, do it to us. On the Knicks side of things, outside of Brunson and DiVincenzo, nobody else is doing anything for us. You know, so that's an issue, man. This guy, Bogdanovich, is one for six tonight. Um, 0 for 3 from 3. So, I mean, he's got to have a clutch shot in him before the game is over. You know, but right now, the Knicks are 0, and 5, 0 for 5 right now. With, with, um, excuse me, zero points in the fourth quarter. Sacramento is now working on their what is what's the score now? Yep, their fifth point there. So they got five points in the fourth quarter. Knicks have definitely got to get the ball in the basket, man. A lot of time coming off the clock there. So let, let me uh, let me see if I can refresh this a little to get a little bit closer. I think I, I think I drifted further back. Refresh the refresh my stream a little bit. Pause. Put some asparagus in that stream. Freshen it up a little bit. Oops. It's not what I wanted to do. So basically, we started the game just now. So let me get back into business. All right, I'm at 918, so I'm a little bit closer now. So on the drive there, Burks tried to drive. So I don't know how long Tom Tibble is going to allow this group to fuck up this game. You know, they, he's going to have to make a, a, a substitution. 
right now uh brunson only has 29 minutes man you know uh you know hartenstein only has 19 minutes you know so uh when are we going to make that substitution to bring brunson in this game what's when the hell is going to take so long so you got burks get it so burks just has to throw it up he, he didn't even look at the rim he just kind of just lost it off balance here comes Darren Fox there. Full head of steam all the way to the basket. Off the rim, no good. Precious jumps up there with the rebound. Catches it in his pocket. Josh Hart gives it to Bogey again. Bogey has no lateral movement, man. Deuce has the top of the key. Back to Precious. Bogey looking to get it back. Bogey gets it again. Launches it. Give it to me, baby. Knocks down a three, finally. So I'm trying to say he has to get a clutch shot at some point. So he finally gets one to drop down there, 78 to 79. So I'm I'm wondering when the fuck Brunson's going to come back in this game. Right now at, at um eight minutes and thirty seven seconds, you know uh Brunson only played four t- excuse me twenty nine minutes right now, so we're talking about eight minutes left, man. So that that'll that'll leave Brunson at um thirty seven minutes. So Brunson needs to come in this game. I don't know what's taking so long. So um so his idea of of helping out is to take um pressures out, you know, so to put um uh, Hartenstein back in. Okay, fine, you know, but um we need to get Brunson back in this game. I don't know how long he's going to take to to get him back in there. This guy Burks needs to get out of there. Even though Burks has has gotten some points for us. And I think his decision making is no good, man. So I'm looking out there Brunson's still not out there. Oh yeah, yeah. So here comes um that's Monk in there. Sabonis so like a robot inside and he's just guaranteed to get a free throw. So I mean this this guy he must have more free throws than than um than regular shots today. What does he, he have, Sabonis? No, Sabonis only has two for four from, from the free throw line. You know, so my eyes are deceiving me. He has 21 points, though, 21 and 10. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, here he goes at the free throw line. First shot is up. No good, so the ball don't lie there. 79 to 78. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 10 free throws, man. Unbelievable. Shout out to, to, uh, to Mobley in the place popping up in here. Can't make a damn shot. It's unbelievable. So that, that I mean that you know we we got these guys to help us out with scoring and 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 I feel like the Knicks are just as just as bad as we were without them. Because Burks now you know jab step jab step step back spin around fake shot shot is up off balance he knocks it down. Man, he is herky jerky man. It drives me crazy. So this is uh, Monk there, full head of steam to number 13. That's Keegan Mario inside to Sabonis. Sabonis with an air ball floater. He's asking for a foul. Air ball hook shot floater? Oh, my God. Bogdanovich has it. Burks has it now. Crossover. Tippy toes. Split the defense on the inside. Off balance shot. No good, but he gets to the free throw. So one thing about um, one thing about Burks, though, he does get to the free throw line. If we, if we remember him. He does get to his chances to go to the free throw line. I don't know what he has on his feet. He has on the Amazon special on his feet, man. He got some ugly ass kicks. You know, shout out to, to Alex Burke. He has beautiful family, though. Beautiful wife, beautiful kids and stuff, man. So shout out to Alex Burks on the family side of things. Well, my, my man has some of the worst sneakers I've ever seen, you know, on the basketball court. What the fuck is on his feet right there? It looks like the Amazon special. It looks like the um, the cheapest sneaker you can find on Amazon. That's what it looks like on his feet right there. And maybe it's a poor um, color choice or something. Look at those kicks, man. What the hell does he have on his feet? Jesus Christ. So the Knicks are up 82 to 79. When did that happen? Alec Burks definitely contributing here off the bench here. I got 12 points. 82 to 79. I'm at 449 mark. I'm, I'm back. I'm back about 20 seconds. Uh, Deuce McBride jabbing, showing on the defense there. We got Davian Mitchell bringing the ball up the court. Uh, Burks is guarding him. Here goes um, Harrison Barnes there. Misses the shot. Hartenstein with the rebound. So Burks is running the show. What is taking so long for, for um, Tom Tibble to bring um, Brunson in? Well, Burks has it going there. This, this They just committed a foul. So we're going to get OG. OG's coming in for Josh Hart. I think Josh Hart definitely needed a, a, a breather. You know, he definitely needed a breather. What is taking it so long for, for Brunson to come in this game? It's 7 minutes and 22 seconds now. You know, what is he going to wait to the four-minute mark to bring Brunson in? So I mean, that's the issue with Tom Thibodeau, man. It takes too long. Here goes Brunson. Finally. Like, when the fuck was he going to bring him in the game? This is fucking crunch time. Why isn't a crunch time player in the game? So he brings in OG for the size and defense, takes out Deuce, brings in Brunson. 
So we got Hartenstein, Brunson. We got Bogey out there. They're trying to get three-point shots going there. Take some around the screen there. Oh, open over. Ends up getting the opposite side um, of the rim layup there. So good layup there by Brunt, by um, Bogey. He's also wearing some trash-ass sne- uh, sneakers, man. What is going on? Um, Here we go. Sabonis there on the elbow. Sabonis looking for a pass there. He's going one-on-one against Hartenstein. Hartenstein has been playing decent defense on him too, though. Even, even though Sabonis has been scoring, look at the defense by Hartenstein. Sabonis came in and might have been a travel. No foul call or anything. Knicks get the turnover. Good defense by Hartenstein. Brunson, full head of steam, takes the bump, dump, and they call it a travel. Or, or they call it an offensive foul. What is going on here? Come on, man. What the fuck is going on here? I don't I don't understand this. They got to show this again. Look, look at the Sabonis, the pumping and dumping. You know, he had a nice layup on the left hand, on the right hand side, but he's keep going, trying to force it to the left. Good defense by the Knicks, but they need to show the Brunson play. What happened just now that, that Brunson, that, uh, they, uh, what did they call? Did they call an offensive foul? I just don't understand. These referees want to be famous so bad, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, Burks is so shaky, man. That um right just now the two plays there the the, um, the three point shot and then the um the euro step uh right handed on on you know right handed layup on the left hand side those are two two great plays there by Bogey so that's what Bogey brings to the table so Bogey now has seven points right now so you know when he's scoring like that that's what he brings to the table now this thing with Shake Shake Milton man um he could play D hit the shot um yeah good defense man but yeah it's definitely on Tibbs. You know, um, this guy Burks is a good player too, but but Burks is so off balance and unpredictable. Like you know, you know, it just it just bugged out. But he has a lot of experience, man. You got you got to give it. I mean, this guy Burks actually was was like leading us a lot of times, getting thirty point games and, and whatever in the playoffs. You know, so Burks is um Burks is a good player. We can't like ignore what he used to do. You know what I'm saying? But um, it is what it is, man. He says um. He said, matter of fact, I said, while I'm here, let me know um, the next Knicks meetup. Uh, Julian um, told me y- y'all cut it up. Yeah, we had a good time, man. You know, that, but that was the um, that was um, the uh, morning brew. The guys for the morning brew, they the, b- between them and uh, one of the Twitter guys, you know, they 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 put together a get together. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, I said it a few times. They're making it seem like that was like a national event or something like that. There's been so many Nick, Nick get togethers uh, being done. Whatever, but um, but, but I guess what when it when it's on Twitter, it seems like they they're doing it for the first time in life, you know. So, but but I get it. It was a really nice event, but I'm, but I'm just stating it that um, you know, uh, nothing but Knicks. We do events all the time, you know. But um, you know, guys need to come out to those too. You know what I'm saying? We we, we always have a great time. Um, every time you go to a game, if you if you take a walk and look around and make uh, contact with people, you can you can turn um Knicks games into meetups every single game. And we've done that too. I like um, you know, you get up there and you start walking around the garden. Um, you know where guys are sitting, you go out there, you know, and meet up with dudes and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, every game could be a meetup, you know. You know, so I guess this um next Twitter is a fr- official first um organized um get together, you know, hosted by um my morning Bruce sports and um Tony T O N Y from um on Twitter. You know, so it, it was a good event. I'm not trying to say it was a bad or anything like that, but it was not something like wasn't like the first time ever, you know. But the, that's that's the with the energy that the, the Twitter guys give up. Anyway, back to the game. We got a Fox cross court pass to Harrison Barnes, catch and shoot. He knocks that down. So Harrison Barnes, I, I was shitting on his game before, man, but he's hit some clutch shots in this one. Motherfucker, look like he needs to take a shower. So Brunson, top of the key, bringing it across the timeline, looking. Bogey's trying to get free. Bogey on the inside. Oh, he tries to go behind the back. Are you crazy? Spin move into the paint. He blows the easy layup there. Nick's fighting for the rebound. OG with a tap past the Burks. Back to Bogey. Give it to me, Bogey. Three-point shot, no good. Hardenstein fighting. That should be Nick's ball. This referee's a bitch, man. That dude right there with the ball head? Come on, man. That was absolutely Nick's ball, but whatever. This referee's a fucking um, clown. So he goes Fox. They're dribbling. Nick's are up by two. Dribbling, dribbling, dribbling. Spin move. Burke's good defense, man. Off the backboard, no good. Bogey with the rebound. So, so I think the um Tom Tibble is doing the wrong thing. They're trying to um to isolate Bogey like that. You know, he's doing the wrong thing. You gotta send Bogey a screen, man. Bogey's wide open right now in the corner. Hornstein has it. Back to Brunson. Brunson on the inside. Double clutch. Layup. No foul. 
Double clutch. Did they call a foul? So Brunson got, I can't believe they called a foul on Brunson. So Brunson made that layup and the foul there. Good wraparound um, pass there. You know, good cut there. But good set. That's that's basically um, team motions there. You know, that's just um, what the Knicks do. It's not really a play, but it's just like uh, actions that the Knicks do. So absolutely a great thing, great curl thing for, for Brunson to go around Hartenstein. Hartenstein find, found um, Brunson on the curl there. So he's definitely getting a, a much a much deserved free throw shot. Off the, he misses it. God, uh, we begging to we begging to get free throws and then miss the clutch ones, man. Five minutes and forty seconds here. Knicks are up by four. Two possession game, man. Uh, De'Aaron Fox has been trying to get uh, trying to bust this open for the longest time. Here goes Harrison Barnes, there, old man vet. Look like he needs to take a shower. OG was able to get the rebound. Brunson is tippy toeing up the court there, hop stepping. Crossing over, um, Keon uh, Clark is right on him, though. Gives it over to Bogey. Bogey back to Brunson. Bogey sets a the screen there. Brunson's trying to, um, oh, Brunson just let it, let it go. Off the front of the rim, no good. Not a good shot there by Brunson. Uh, here it goes, uh, Sacramento trying to release, but that's going to end up being Nick's ball. We try to catch up with this um, chat. Oh, man. Missed the fourth quarter, yeah. Shout out to State. We're going to do a pod tomorrow. So um, tomorrow around 7 o'clock, you know, State is always changing times on me. He'll say, yeah, we're going to do it at 7 o'clock. And next thing you know, I see on Twitter, yeah, me and you were going to do a podcast at 9. But he never told me. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, State is crazy with that, man. He just, like, kind of dictates things for himself, you know, like what he wants to do and always tells me after the fact. But um, sometime tomorrow, we should be doing a podcast. It's supposed to be at 7 o'clock. Um, I anticipate it's probably gonna be later than that, but I'm ready to go at seven. So I'll be I'll be out there. I should be um uh, we're gonna do it live together. So I, I should pop up at the at the um at the store. So me, me and um state will do our first live podcast together. So I gotta I gotta grab some equipment so I can have my own shit, you know, um uh, to to do my do my thing on my side, you know. I don't know what what um you know, I, I gotta communicate with him, but I'll, I'll bring some of my equipment so just to make it um, a little bit more smoother. You know, but we'll see what happens there. So I, I love chopping it up with State. You know, State is a different person on YouTube, man. So you know, I definitely, I definitely enjoy that. Yo, not for nothing. I've been saying it for years. This guy State, uh, you know, he's like the king of Twitter. You know, so like him um, taking the time off from YouTube and really building up that that Twitter um, thing, he absolutely did exactly what what he came out there to do. So right now he got everybody at the palm of their hands on Twitter right now. And right now YouTube, you know, people are coming on the YouTube channel because of his engagement on Twitter. So if you want to know the formula, how to get that popping, man, um, you know, you know, state knows how to do that. Baseline. We got um a monk there with a baseline jump shot. Knocks that down. Ah, yeah, yeah. 91 to 84. I'm not good at math, but it um looks like um the Knicks are like two possessions away there, two possession game. Brunson coming across the timeline. Wow, he barely gets across that timeline. They almost almost a half court violation. Hornstein back to Brunson. Brunson looking back to Burks. Burks just lets it fly. I mean, Bogey just jumps in there trying to get the rebound. No good. Here comes Sacramento. I mean, this is a really good basketball game, not for nothing. Here comes Monk for three in the corner. He knocks that down. Big time clutch shot by by um by Monk. Not a fan of his game, man. Not a fan of the way he carries himself and stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? But um, it is what it is. He had a clutch jump shot. Got to give credit where it's due there. So right now, that is um, that is absolutely a two-possession game now for the Knicks. You know, they hit that three-point shot. It might it might have been a three-possession game. So, you know, I'm not good at math. But now it's definitely a two-possession game. Uh, so, um, you know, Burks has been doing good. Bogey's been – we've been getting the most out of Bogey. Bogey's four for 12, one for five, five rebounds, nine uh, points. So, I mean, that's the effort that he's going to give there. You know, he's going to get 12 shots a game, it seems like, double-figure shots. Um, you know, he's got to do a better job of making some of these things, man, especially the three-point shots. Also, the Knicks, are, I think the Tom Thibodeau the Knicks are doing a, 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 a bogey a disservice. They got to give him um, some more space. You know, he's working too hard to get these shots, man. He doesn't have the athleticism he used to. So they definitely need to um, send out um, some picks and stuff like that to get him free. I mean, maybe even double screens, you know, to, to get them um, get them free. If you're going util to utilize them, you got to do that. Yeah, man, Amazon special, you know what I'm talking about? The freaking um, no-name shits. I got plenty of Amazon specials in the crib. I got some um, I got some Jordan 1s. Not Jordan 1s. Not 1s. 1s, 2s, 3s. I got Jordan 3s 
um in the in the crib here that that um that are basically bootlegs they have no logo on them at all but they're jordan threes though they look exactly like the, i'm not exactly you know but they look kind of similar to jordan threes man i'm rocking them since i don't give a fuck you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm over 40 and i ain't trying to get no bitches you know what i'm saying no disrespect you know i ain't trying to get no bitches you know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm gonna rock those sneakers. I'm gonna put my Die Hard Knicks logo on them joints, and then I'm gonna call it a day. You know what I'm saying? I'll be rocking those in the summer. You know, so I don't give a damn. You know, but uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to the um to play no basketball with some sherbet, some um some blueberry and um, orange sherbet sneakers, man. They ain't happening, fam. You know, unbelievable. Ay ay ay. Great comments, man. Definitely appreciate Trish and Cully, man, doing their thing here. Ball clearly up. Definitely appreciate you guys coming through here. Yeah, man, Julian, uh, you and Julian, man, Um, you know, I, I got through some, some of the pods you guys did, man. man that's, that's a good look. You know what I'm saying? That's that's one thing that's hard to do, to get to get some um, get people together to do pods. You know, but if, if that's something that you guys want to do, you should do it. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you can make it happen. You know, I, I would love to get down with, with, with Julian to chop it up a little bit. You know, of course, I always I always have fun um, hanging out with you too, um, Cully, man. So, you know, it depends on what you guys want to do. If you if you guys want to um want to do something like that, I have some ideas because, I, like I said, I, I would like to do a light rebranding to the channel. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about it. I don't know if I should do it or not. You know, because it might end up being the death of the channel if I do too much with it, man. But I'm really thinking about doing like a light rebranding just to um just to switch it up around here. You know, um, it goes OG gives it over to Josh Hart. Josh Hart back to Hartenstein. Hartenstein on the drive there. Sees his opening. Definitely pushes uh, Sabonis off the block and gets all the way to the basket. I, lo I love the energy. I love the snarl there by Hartenstein. Like, yeah, like, yeah, man, just push my man out the way. Sabonis is lighting ass, not for nothing. He got, the, he got the stats, but look how easily he just got pushed off his space there. Nothing that Sabonis can do. Kind of got emasculated there. That's why Julius goes right at, at, um, at um, Sabonis. So this is one of those games there, Sabonis. If um if Julius was there, we probably would be cracking these cats right now. So anyway, you know, like like I said, if you guys if you guys would like to do it with each other, I think you guys could do it together. You um Julian and the Cully, you know, you guys get it get it popping, man. You know, you got a lot of things going, you know, so you guys should do it with each other. But you know, like I said, if things work out, like these late night pies, I know Cully's usually free for the evening. So I mean, I would I would love for him to have something happening in the, in the evening on the pod if you could, if you could do that. Brunson fade away off the rim. No good. Not, not the best shot. Still, right now it's a two possession game for the for the Knicks and of Sacramento. Uh cross court to Harrison Barnes over the Keon Clark on the inside. Comes in and gets up on the rim for the dunk. And, and he wanted a foul. They always want a foul, man. I mean, he pointed at the rest of anything. They should have called, they should call the technical. You know, every they want a foul every single time. I just don't get it. So Brunson has it. Brunson um, has it right now on a switch now. So he got, uh, oh, man, DiVincenzo in the corner for three. Oh, my God, he hit the top of the backboard. They didn't They didn't call it. They didn't call it? So what are they going to call? Like, DiVincenzo literally hit the top of the backboard. What the hell is going on here? I mean, these, these refs, you know, I gave them credit for that one play, man, but these refs here don't know what the fuck they're talking about here. I mean, DiVincenzo literally hit the top of the backboard. And then they let the play keep going. So I guess they got it right now. Ah, yeah, yeah. Look at that! I can't believe DiVincenzo hit the hit the top of the backboard. Ah, yeah, yeah. Knicks always want to make it hard. It goes Fox. I mean, as a Sacramento, they don't have nothing going for themselves as far as offense or anything. So that's one thing that we have um, going for us. Um, they've been trying to fight for the loose balls, man, but I think the Knicks are definitely ahead of them when it comes to that. And rebounding, we're a better rebounding team overall than them. So anyway, Brunson right now, sidestep, fadeaway, three-point shot. That's not a good look. Hartenstein with the rebound. Kicks it back out, but what are they calling? Are they going to call out of bounds? These referees are fucking suckers, man. So Hartenstein's running up the court. No, no substitution. I thought it was a substitution. So we're gonna rock with these with the squad that we got out there. Oh my god, that shot was not good. So Brunson's kind of like like lost it a little bit in this fourth quarter here. So De'Aaron Fox comes around the screen, being going about Josh Hart, gives it up to Monk. Monk sidesteps. Now he launches it. 
Three point shot, no good. DiVincenzo throws his whole body and he gets the rebound, taps it out to Hart. Hart secures it. Brunson has it now. 19, 18, 17. Get it across the timeline. Jesus. Brunson top of the key being guarded by closely by Ken Clark. Switch. Monk has him now. Back to Josh. Josh spins in the lane. Still has it. Back to Brunson. Three-point shot for Brunson. Off the front of the rim, man. So Brunson, shaky at best, man, the last few shots here. Giving Sacramento every chance to get back into this game now. So here goes De'Aaron Fox. I thought he shot that. Here goes Sabonis on the inside, pumping and dumping. Spinning and winning, traveling and babbling. So they, find, they finally called it. What was taking so long? That motherfucker was, was tap dancing in the paint, man. Spinning, spinning and 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 um and grinning, tap dancing. Look at that! Look at that sliding. Look, that's an official. Like what was taking so long? He he had to blatantly do it. Golly! So I mean, if the Knicks score, Knicks Knicks have to pad this right now. Ninety four to ninety one. We cannot um win this game if we if we don't add an extra point. And we have to get. I mean, Keon Clark fell asleep just now. Brunson came in there with a. I mean, Keon Clark must have been looking at somebody in the crowd or something. Somebody must have showed their tits or something. But Keon Clark lost to, lost Brunson there. Brunson blows past him and gets an easy layup. Somebody must have showed must have went like that. Whoa! And show Keon Clark. Watch this. Keon Clark got lost. He wasn't. What the fuck? I'll take it. You know, but Keon Clark he got lost for a second. What the fuck were you doing? You know, somebody must have showed his showed them um, his tits just now. Show them their show them their tits. Oh my god. Lord have mercy. Yeah, morning brew is tough, man. The guys come on at eleven. I'm always at work, so I can never catch them. I can catch them on my day off on, on like a Monday. I usually try to catch them on Monday. But there's always something going on with me. But um, I always try to catch them on Monday if I if I'm good. You know, but they, they do a great podcast, man. They got a lot of momentum too. A lot of people fuck with them because they're good people, man. You know, I fuck with them off the court too, man. A bunch of good guys. Uh, Brunson bringing up the court there, being guarded by two people there. Kicks it out to Josh. And so we're Hartenstein. So Knicks are playing keep away 18 seconds. Sacramento's not fouling. They finally get it on Brunson. Not for nothing, Brunson is the right guy to get it. Right now, in clutch situations, Brunson seems to miss free throws in the clutch situations, man. Uh, Brunson, um, Brunson this year, he's, um, shooting 84%, which is really good. Uh, but you know, Patrick, you don't usually shoot decent from, from the free throw line, 70 something percent. But when it comes to clutch, you know, Patrick, you used to miss free throws and stuff too, man. So here goes Brunson to getting his chance to get these um, clutch shots up. First one is up. He knocks that down. So hopefully he makes me um, look like an ass and knocks these free throws down. Here comes the Knicks players, man. You got the tattoos on the sleeve. You got the hat, got the hat cocked to the side. That's my guys from the 90s, man. My 90s people out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. If anybody's hanging out here, you see the bottom of the screen, get the likes up, man. Like my man, like my, my girl Trisha. Get the likes up. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a late game. Got um Lavar, Lavon Carson. Thank you for popping in, my brother. So he took care of business there on the free throw line, 98 to 91. So it's an uphill battle here. 12 seconds. We got um, De'Aaron Fox. Misses everything. So that's game right there. Josh Hart with the rebound. Got to get it across the timeline. Get it across the timeline. Josh Hart spins. And that's the end of the game there. Man, Knicks win 98 to 91. Old school, 98 to 91. This is the type of game that we want to see. We want. We don't want to see these games where guys are getting 129 and stuff like that. We don't want to see those type of games. We want to see these grind out. Games where guys are playing defense, fighting for loose balls, getting rebound, you know, making clutch shots, that type of stuff. Hard work. But that's that's what real basketball fans want to see. So and that's that's one thing about enjoying the Knicks, watching the Knicks this year, and this the development of this team over the few years. This is real bad. This is the basketball that we've been praying for. You know what I'm saying? This um, you know, the idea of getting a superstar and stuff like that. That's not Knicks basketball. That's not Knicks basketball. What we saw tonight, even though it was it was kind of ugly at times or whatever, this is the game of basketball that we, we want to see. You know, if if um Julius was here, I think Julius would have put his shoulder in, in Sabonis's chest, and I think we would we would have probably um taken care of this team uh, a little bit more than, than what we did. You know, so Brunson right now is on the on the MIC. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord God. Thank God we won this game. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. We got a point guard, man. But Bricks Nation, Brunson was making it look shaky at the end there, man. I shout out to DiVincenzo. Hit the top of the backboard on a, on a um, three-point shot. Wow. 
You know, this guy, um, Bog- um, Bogey was messing up towards the end there. Um, but but he did hit two um kind of two kind of spectacular plays there to make up for for his bad um bad play throughout the game. Uh, Burks was shaky at best, but those twelve points were came into the clutch this uh, for this game. Um, as far as the other guys, DiVincenzo, like I said, fifteen points, five for sixteen, three for twelve today. Uh, forty two points for Brunson, man. What is going on with Brunson? Forty two points, but when he scores forty two points. Like, I never mentioned that he's been scoring. I mentioned that he had 33 points a few minutes ago, you know, maybe like last quarter. But he finishes the game with 42. This is the second team, back-to-back 40-point games here. And this seems routine, you know? This is like stuff that he does. You know, it's not it's not something, oh, my God, did you see what he did? No, this is what he does, fam. You know, so you want to talk about superstar. This guy is a fucking superstar. You know, so my, my thing is, like, we got to get off of that. You know, we got some ball players on this team, man. Even though Brunson is the one that, that's getting the, the bulk of the shots, taking a lot of shots and stuff like that. In the fourth quarter, like I say, he took a couple questionable shots that could have lost us the game there. But he still ended up with 42, you know, 42. And we and we got the W, which is most important, man. I got that, got that W. You know, so, I mean, Brunson is excellent. I'm not saying nothing bad about anything that Brunson did today. Six turnovers, you know what I'm saying? A couple, you know, he's not perfect. That's the point I'm trying to make. Not perfect. Six turnovers. He did get four steals. Couple good um, um defensive plays that he had today, um you know outside of getting steals and stuff like that. But um you can't deny that forty two man, you know. So we we got ourselves a point guard. He's dope, definitely um doing um uh, holding us down here. I can't wait to get Julius back. I can't wait till o- OG gets his um confidence um in the, in his shooting. You know um he's doing everything else well, but he had three blocks. I mean let's do this right. Um OG got two points, um six rebounds, two assists, one steal, but he got three blocks today. So he played 33 minutes, man. Cardio wise, everything is good. Um, he just got to get confidence back in, in shooting that jump shot. So getting the reps and playing the minutes is definitely going to get him there. Hartenstein, I thought played excellent, man. A couple of great blocks, key blocks. You know, a couple of key drives. He bullied set uh, Sabonis down here down the stretch. Uh, pushed him right to the to the basket to get to get a key clutch um, layup there. Um, on the inside, I think he I think he contained him basically in the fourth quarter. Did a really good job guarding him. Precious too. Let me let me bring him up. Um, you know, um, kind of quiet in 20 minutes, but 20 minutes not for nothing. If you play double that, he would have four points, 10 rebounds, eight assists, you know, uh, two blocks. So um just project it. So I mean Persons played a really good game too, man. Good defensive play against um Sabonis. Uh, a little bit late because Sabonis was able to, to um to score on him, but um he definitely made him work, definitely, man. Um, what else we got here? We got Josh Hart uh finished the game with nine, uh 12 and three. So that's a typical Josh Hart game. Not not um the crazy dominant game that he's been having, but still this is the game that he's gonna bring to the table that's gonna help us win games. Um what else we got here? Um uh, like I already mentioned Bogdanovich. Uh, Miles McBride didn't really do much today. He kind of was out there kind of filling up space. Um, but you know, when it comes to the bench players and, and some of the other guys too, it's like next man up, whoever got it, just just come and bring it. So that, that's the mentality that is gonna have to happen when when Mitch comes in there. Mitch guy has to fit in it and get that mentality, you know, come in there and, and give me what you got in the minutes that you get. You know what I'm saying? That that's, it has to, it has to be that way, you know, because Julius is coming too, and Julius is going to have to um figure that out also, you know, because we cannot uh, win games with Josh Hart, not playing, you know, with him only playing 10 minutes and shit like that. It's not going to happen. Josh Hart is, is a big um, thing of what we do. So he's still going to have to get 30 minutes per game, even with Julius um and OG back. You know, so time two, we got to figure it out, man. That's going to be so tough, man. Big time topic of conversation. But um, Knicks win, man. So as far as the standings, let's check out the NBA standings. Let me see if I can if I can get it up here. So ESPN usually updates it. Yeah, so let me see. Uh, Yeah, so ESPN did update it, right? So uh, this is the standings here for, for, um, for right now for the, for the NBA. Uh, 43. Uh, no, excuse me, 40 wins to 27. Uh, right now, we're still in the fourth place. Cleveland Cavaliers is ahead of us with 42. Um, I think we could catch Cleveland. You know, let's keep that up. I think we could catch them. The Bucks also, they only have 43 wins. I think we could catch the Bucks too. But is that what we really want to do, that we're so focused on catching guys? You know, looking at, like I said, I think we could catch the Bucks. We can, we can catch Cleveland and the Bucks if, if, we, if we really wanted to. If we could lock in in these games and really um, get these wins, I think we can catch those guys. You know, so let, let's say let's say if that happens, and the Knicks claim the second spot in the East, which which belongs to them. I think it belongs to. Them. I think the Knicks 
even though we've been hurt all year, I think we belong as the second best team. We we've been the second best team in the East all year. You know, if we were healthy this whole time, the record would reflect it. You know what I'm saying? So if we can get to the second spot there, if you're talking about the playoffs, even in the way that it is, we will play the 76ers in the in the first round. If things end end the way that it is and the Knicks make it to the second, make it to the second spot, we will play 76ers. You know, so at the present moment, we will play Orlando Magic. And I'm quite sure that a lot of you guys know that Orlando Magic kind of has it out for us. You know, so that's not the best matchup for us there. You know, it'll be a shaky matchup in the first round. So us playing against Orlando Magic, you know, so, um, you know, it's, it's interesting, man. You know, that's why you play the games. That's why you play the season and stuff like that to see how, see how the seeding works. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. If they play, let's say um, the Knicks play Orlando, I think the next matchup, uh, would, would that be would that be against Boston or would that be against the um the the Bucks? You know, it's it's interesting, man. You know, I really don't know how that how that would play out. Um, but um, yeah, man, the Knicks are in the mix, man. We, we're definitely gonna be a bona fide playoff team. We're not gonna be a playing team this year. You know, so it is what it is, man. I'm happy. For, I'm happy to to call this game. Glad to be back. Um, doing a full watch along and stuff like that. I know it's late. It's on twelve forty five. Some of these guys are still gonna do their their um post game shows. You know, um, shout out to to everyone that, that keeps it consistent throughout all these years. Um, I think Sim has been doing this since 2017. So, I mean, that's a long time for guys to be consistently doing this shit every single night, man. So, um, without further ado, please hit the thumbs up on the way out. Please hit subscribe. Please keep keep supporting the Dire Knicks podcast. Like I said, I, I got a pod with State tomorrow. So, Dire State of Mind will be on his channel and my channel. So, please stay tuned to that. Uh, participate in the chat and stuff like that. And um, I'll catch you guys another time. Like I said, I'm, I'm thinking about doing something with this channel a little bit different. I've been mentioning that to you guys a lot lately, man. But uh, hopefully I, I can uh, I can figure that out. Uh, if anybody has opinions, you know, please hit me up in DMs. DM me, DM me on Instagram. DM me on uh, on, um, on on Twitter. Um, send me an email if you want or whatever you want me to do. Whatever you think that um, any opinions you have on the sh- um, with the show, um, you know, please help out, you know, if you, if you can, man. So. Anyway, you got Mr. Miff just popping in here with, with a super chat. I'll be trying to get out of here because I don't want you guys to give me those super chats, man. I'll be humbled, man, when, when guys send send super chats. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, but you know, Mr. Miff coming in, in in the sneak tip there with four with a 499 super um super sticker. Definitely appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot, man. Definitely appreciate the love. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm up out of here. Definitely appreciate you guys. Um yeah, what, before we go, what, when is the next game? When is the next next um next game? Let me see. I haven't really messed with um with um ESPN like that. Uh so we we play uh Golden State. So we play Golden State, another 10 o'clock game, Golden State at 10, and Denver at 9. So Monday, uh Monday, I'll be here. I'll be here for the 10 o'clock game. It's gonna be rough. Uh, but at 10 o'clock game, I will be calling it here um also oh after that we got a big um big break to um, on thursday so that's that's good so i mean I'll, I'll be i'll be i'll be seeing you guys on monday um like i said again i'll see you guys tomorrow too with, with, with dire state of mind and um i'll see you guys um then guys so have a great night go enjoy your favorite po- um post game show wherever you like to do that and i'll see you guys later man peace do we do we need the um dire next theme song at the end man why not I see you. Die hard. Trap. We gonna do this one the right way. Uh. We in here forever. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Die hard. Homie, die hard. You can check the swag. He the realest by far. by far. Swimming in that blue and orange. He the lifeguard. Life yeah, he been through. At least he got some nice stars He can smell a trophy, yeah, he need it back to back Represent himself, his own name is on his back Ten toes down, try to stop him, he come back Bandwagon hoppers, he will knock you off your tracks You ain't saying nothing, Nero been here from the start He been working in the lab to take his team and make it art See him going over film to help him build and make him smart He will tell you how he feels because he's real and he got heart He will never fade away Change his face, everybody picking face, and he's feeling out of place. Cause he is for the team, and he always rough the squad. Like that Christmas movie, he gon' always die. Huh. City on my back. They 
They ask me what's my name and it is on my back. I'm just speaking facts. I'm just speaking facts. We got big dreams, we ain't looking back. We be really die hard, yeah, that's a fact. We be really die hard, ain't no going back. Make the whole crowd rise like a thermostat. Fourth quarter, I'm the killer that's gonna murder that.